Welcome. We're going to start in just a minute. And um, I'm inviting our wonderful interpreters to come join me. And I'm going to launch us off on this really important day for farm worker justice. So, okay, great. Um, you can see on the screen we have many academic programs and sponsors and funders of this day and this event. And um, I really want to have people look at that and um, send out a huge appreciation. My name is Ellen Short Sanchez. I'm the director of the Center for Community-Based Learning and Action here at Evergreen, and we're a public service center. And once upon a time at the Evergreen State College, there was another public service center called the Labor Education and Research Center that gave birth to this event over 10 years ago um, through a connection with the National Farm Worker Awareness Week, which is usually held around Cesar Chavez's birthday. Hola, yo soy Adam Schwartz Sánchez, la directora del Centro de eh, Acción Comunitaria y Aprendizaje Comunitario. Eh, hace un tiempo la Universidad de Evergreen tenía un centro de educación y trabajo que dio luz a este evento hace 10 años a través de la... Semana Nacional de Concientización acerca de los trabajadores agrícolas, que se llevó a cabo durante la semana de eh, cumpleaños de César Chávez. And I worked with the Labor Center as a work study student to support farm worker justice at that time. Yo trabajé como estudiante eh, en ese momento para apoyar este evento. So this is a continued step in our legacy. Y este es un paso más en nuestro viaje con ese, después de ese evento. And we're really excited to focus on West Coast farm worker organizing this year. Y hoy estamos emocionados de enfocarnos en las organizaciones de trabajadores agrícolas en la costa oeste. Thank you very much to all the planners. If anyone on the planning committee could raise your hand. Muchas gracias a los organizadores. Por favor, suban sus manos. And the presenters and the interpreters. Y gracias también a los presentadores y a las intérpretes. Now I'd like to welcome faculty member Lori Meeker to give a tribute to Jose Gomez. Y ahora queremos invitar a Lori Meeker, profesora de Evergreen, para dar un tributo a Jose Gomez. <coughs> Buenos días. I've been given the honor and the responsibility to talk about Jose Gomez's legacy and career. Me and dado, to give you. Me han dado el honor y la responsabilidad de hablar sobre Jose Gomez y su historia y su carrera. And to give you a glimpse into why we honor this important work you're all doing today in his name. Y darles una imagen de um, el honor de el trabajo que él ha hecho. Um, y el trabajo que se está haciendo hoy. But before I do that, I want to acknowledge um, Jose's family members who shared him with us here at Evergreen and um, who are present today. I think Jenny might be here or she'll be here later. Jenny Padilla. Antes de hacer eso, quiero reconocer a los familiares de Jose y los familiares que pueden estar aquí presente. Quizás eh, Jenny Padilla está aquí presente. And um, he, he was a brother in a family of 10, and he was the kind of brother who played tricks and made his siblings laugh. Él era un hermano en una familia de 10 personas, y era el tipo de hermano que hacía reír a sus hermanos. And, and one, of, one of his sisters, Aralia, who lives in Wyoming, she sent the following comments for us to consider today. Eh, una de sus hermanas, Aralia, que vive en Wyoming, mandó los siguientes comentarios para que nosotros compartamos con ustedes hoy. She said, I am pleased and honored to send my greetings and best wishes in celebration of my brother, Jose Gomez. Me siento honrada y muy feliz de poder eh, compartir con ustedes un día para honrar a mi hermano, Jose Gomez. To the participants and, organi and organizations in attendance, please know that many of our family members stand shoulder to shoulder with your causes. 
Para los participantes y voluntarios y las organizaciones involucradas, espero que sepan que nuestra familia está presente junto con ustedes en las causas con las que están trabajando. And in the important endeavor of improving the working conditions of farm workers throughout the Northwest and beyond. Y la importancia que es trabajar para mejorar las condiciones de trabajo de los trabajadores agrícolas, tanto en este estado como en otras partes también. Hard stoop labor in farm fields help mold many of our many of my own family members' lives, but none more profoundly than Jose's. Um, el trabajo duro um, ha ayudado a moldear la vida tanto de mi familia, pero especialmente de la vida de José. The history of his work with Cesar Chavez and the United Farm Workers of America is well documented and praised by those who knew him well. La historia de su trabajo junto con César Chávez y la Unión de Trabajadores ha sido una historia muy bien documentada y honrada. A través de los años. We thank all the staff at the Evergreen State College who continue to dedicate their time and love to this event. Eh, le damos muchas gracias a los, las personas involucradas en Evergreen eh, que se continúan, continúan trabajando para crear este evento. Have a productive and successful Jose Gomez Farm Workers Justice Day. Eh, y para tener un exitoso día de Jose Gomez. Um, Día de Justicia para los Trabajadores Agrícolas. And she signed off with, si se puede, vive la causa. Si se puede, vive la causa. <coughs>《我有很多资料关于他的生活和他的生活》，是一个非常长的故事，有很多细节，所以我尽量的缩短它。他出生于十七世纪的美国，出生在加拿大，长大于加拿大。他出生于十七世纪的美国，出生在加拿大，长大于加拿大。他有一个非常长的生涯，从他开始工作在 Evergreen 的时候，在一九八八年。Tuvo una larga y distinguida carrera antes de venir a trabajar con nosotros en 1988. Trabajó como un eh, líder académico antes de involucrarse como parte de la facultad aquí en Evergreen y luego se involucró con la Unión de Trabajadores en la Universidad. As Aurelia mentioned in the comments she sent, Jose is perhaps best known for his work with the United Farm Workers of America. Como Aurelia mencionó en sus comentarios, Jose quizás es más reconocido más que nada por su trabajo de los, con los Trabajadores Unidos de, los, de América. He understood the experience of hard working conditions in the fields from personal and family experience. Él entendía las experiencias de trabajo duro en los campos agrícolas tanto por experiencia personal como la experiencia de sus familiares. That experience involved working long hours thinning sugar beets with the short handled hoe before this tool that he called one of the most oppressive tools ever devised for human labor became illegal. Um, él trabajó por muchas horas en haciendas de azúcar utilizando, um, utilizando el joquito, el corquito, una técnica que luego se hizo ilegal y que él nombró como uno de los materiales más opresivos con los que uno puede trabajar. His early experiences also taught him the value of a good education. Sus experiencias iniciales también les enseñó, le enseñó el valor de una buena educación. En 1954, en Wyoming, las escuelas estaban segregadas y él fue a un colegio llamado el Colegio Mexicano. Jose and his sister Rosa were the first Mexican-American students to attend Emmett School rather than the Mexican school. 
José y su hermana Rosa fueron los primeros estudiantes mexicanos en atender um, un colegio no segregado. So he experienced firsthand the different and unequal educational opportunities provided to children at that time. O sea que él vivió en su propia vida la desigualdad de eh, el sistema escolar en ese momento. In the commencement speech that Jose gave here at the Evergreen State College in 2006, he said that half a century later, he could still, quote, feel, smell, and taste those days of oppression as if they were only yesterday. En un discurso que José dio aquí en the Evergreen State College, él mencionó que 50 años después él todavía puede sentir, oler y vivir todas las um, experiencias de opresión que vivió en esos años de su vida. So he committed himself to social justice after those early experiences and carried that commitment throughout his career. Así que él se dedicó a la justicia social después de vivir esas experiencias iniciales en su vida y dedicó el resto de su vida a eso. So after he um, earned a BA um, from the University of Wyoming, Jose began graduate studies in Spanish and Latin American literature at the University of Wyoming. Después de ganar su título universitario, um, José hizo su carrera de posgrado en la Universidad de Wyoming. In 1966, he was awarded a, Ful a Fulbright program grant to study Latin American literature in Nicaragua. En 1966, um, José empezó a estudiar literatura en Nicaragua. And he returned to continuous studies in 67 and 68. The social and political context of the civil rights movement and the anti-war movement opposing U.S. involvement in Vietnam led him to postpone his graduate studies to engage in, uh, in, in activism. Eh, cuando regresó en el 66 y en el 67, los movimientos eh, en contra de la guerra lo inspiraron a posponer su eh, carrera académica para dedicarse al activismo social. His commitment to social justice was also exemplified by his service as a Peace Corps volunteer in Brazil in 1968 and 69, so, we, where he organized literacy classes and trained elementary school teachers. Su dedicación a la justicia social también se demostró um, con el trabajo de voluntariado que él hizo en what country? En Brasil, um, donde se dedicó a la educación y la Ahí. So um, it was about that same time, July 1969, when he saw the cover story in Time magazine covering the work of Cesar Chavez and the United Farm Workers Organizing Committee. Fue alrededor del 69 que José vio en la carátula de Time magazine la cara de eh, Cesar Chavez y el trabajo que él estaba haciendo. And so um, he decided to join the movement and he helped organize consumer boycotts of produce. Y él decidió unirse al movimiento y trabaja, trabajar para eh, que la gente no compre ciertos productos eh, de vegetales. And so he helped organize this, these boycotts in New Jersey in 1970, Washington DC, and New York City in 1972. Y él ayudó a trabajar estos movimientos en New Jersey en los 1970, en New York y en Washington DC en 1972. And by 1973, he was the executive assistant to UFW President Cesar Chavez and served in that capacity for two years. Y para 1973 ya era el asistente de Cesar Chavez. And at that time, he was 30 years old. Y en ese tiempo solamente tenía 30 años. And then the next phase of his academic career involved going to law school, and by 1981, he had re received his law degree from Harvard Law School. Para la siguiente fase de su carrera, él fue a uh, estudió para ser abogado y se graduó de abogado en la escuela de ley de Harvard. And so he continued his social activism through new avenues in that time period. Y él continuó su eh, activismo social a través de otras avenidas en ese tiempo de su vida. En septiembre de 1978, he founded a student organization known initially as the Committee on Gay and Legal Issues. En septiembre de 
1968 se unió a otro comité para trabajar eh, eh, problemas legales. This group was later renamed Lambda, L -A -M -B -D -A, and is currently active. Este grupo después se llamó Lambda, L -A -M -B -D -A, y todavía está activo. And the group worked to get Harvard Law School to amend its non-discrimination policy to include gays and lesbians. Y el grupo trabajó en la escuela de ley de Harvard para incluir um, a la comunidad LGBT. And Lambda celebrated its um, 25th anniversary in 2003, where Jose traveled back to Harvard to receive the Distinguished Alumni Award. Y Lambda continuó y cumplió su 25 aniversario en el 2003, donde Jose volvió para recibir un premio acerca de su trabajo. While it's brave now to stand up for gay and lesbian rights, it was braver still in 1978 when he first started this work. Así ahora sea un acto con mucho coraje eh, trabajar hacia los derechos de la comunidad LGBT. Eso fue un acto muy, muy fuerte en el tiempo en el que él se dedicó a él. Jose's commitment to social justice never wavered. And whenever there is an opportunity nearby, he worked on it. Eh, la dedicación que José tenía um, hacia la justicia social nunca cambiaba y cuando encontraba una oportunidad para dedicarse a esto él la tomaba. So I'm going to jump forward to in 2002 the Washington State Legislature passed legislation that enabled faculty at four-year colleges and universities to organize unions to engage in collective bargaining. Y ahora me voy a ir al 2002 donde la legislatura eh, pasó una ley en la que los profesores universitarios podrían crear uniones para negociar sus sueldos. And so Jose supported faculty unionization from the start and once we won our certification election we realized we had to develop a leadership team. Jose siempre apoyó la unio, unionización de eh, los profesores y una vez que esto se dio a cabo nos dimos cuenta de que necesitábamos liderazgo. And so then, uh, those of us who were involved in the organizing, including Jose and myself, we looked around at each other and uh, decided to see who would be willing to step up. Nosotros, los que estábamos involucrados en la unión, eh, incluyendo José y yo, eh, estábamos buscando quién iba a ser alguien que podía ser un líder para nosotros. So another impor important part of Jose's legacy was that not only did he stay engaged and active throughout all of these years and all of these organizations, but then he encouraged other people to stay engaged and to step up and engage in the leadership. Otra parte muy importante de la historia de José es que no solamente él se sentía eh, en el derecho de hacer liderazgo, sino que también le pedía a otras personas que se involucraran y que sean activas en el movimiento. And José encouraged me to run for president of the union. Um, he was noting at the time that the statewide faculty union needed more gender diversity in the leadership, and so with his support I was elected the first president of our local union, United Faculty of Evergreen. José me apoyó en, en nominarme para presidente de la Unión y con su apoyo me convertí en la primera um, eh, presidente de la Unión. So he, he didn't want to be out in front, but he was willing to serve as vice president and he did so um, in, in, and supported our work for many years as, as a vice president. Él no quería estar en el frente, pero sí se dispuso a ser el vicepresidente y por muchos años trabajó como vicepresidente de la Unión. And he was also a member of the first bargaining team, and he brought his experience from his days in the United Farm Workers Union to our deliberations. So there's this continuity between, uh, between all of his um, endeavors and all of his work. También eh, formó parte del equipo de negociación y trajo toda la sabiduría que tenía acerca del trabajo que hizo antes eh, a este trabajo. O sea que hay un sentido de continuidad eh, con el trabajo que él estaba haciendo antes y el trabajo que estaba haciendo ahora. And he um, brought the teachings, um, he underscored the teachings that he learned from Chavez and the United Farm Workers and he brought those into um, our deliberations and he underscored those teachings in his 2006 um, commencement address and I, I'm going to quote him. Um, él trajo las lecciones que aprendió junto a su trabajo con César Chávez a eh, 
el trabajo que vinimos a hacer aquí. Y estas fueron lecciones que él mencionó en su discurso aquí en Evergreen. He said, Learn how to make a decision, the right decision. Él dijo, aprende a tomar una decisión, la decisión correcta. This is by far the most valuable lesson I learned from Cesar Chavez and it has served me well time and again, he, he said. Esta es la lección más importante que aprendí eh, con César Chávez y me ha ayudado una vez y veces repetidas. Particularly as you work collectively with others, you will encounter thorny and complex issues that will require you and your associates to come to a decision. Particularmente cuando trabajes colectivamente con otras personas, se te van a presentar muchas oportunidades para tomar decisiones y estas son cosas que puedes eh, tomar y decidir eh, muchas veces en tu carrera. Of course, you must always try to make the right decision through appropriate deliberation. Siempre trata de tomar la decisión correcta a través de deliberación correcta. And he said, but once you have agreed to a decision, you must make it the right decision. Eh, y él dijo, una vez que hayan trabajado para tomar una decisión, tienes que trabajar para que esa decisión sea la decisión correcta. And he said, assuming that the decision making was not arbitrary or capricious or flawed, that the new evidence has not um, entered the picture, your responsibility to the collective entity is to make the decision the right one. Asumiendo que eh, no haya variables después de tomar la decisión y que la decisión no haya sido una decisión ar arbitraria, es tu deber para el colectivo trabajar para hacer que esta decisión sea la decisión correcta. And so this means moving beyond any disagreement you may have with the decision and working hard to implement it. Esto significa um, mover más allá, moverte más allá de cualquier eh, desacuerdo que tengas con la decisión y trabajar para que la decisión sea una efectiva. So these teachings were um, incredibly important to our bargaining team's work. Estas decisiones fueron increíblemente importantes para nuestro equipo de negociación. And we sometimes fought like cats and dogs or like brothers and sisters as we worked through contract language and important principles. Y algunas veces eh, peleábamos como perros y gatos o hermanos y hermanas mientras, mientras trabajábamos para encontrar eh, las negociaciones apropiadas. And Jose was the type of person who brought gravitas to any situation. Um, y José era el tipo de persona que traía momentum para cada situación. But he also was a trickster and made jokes and made the process fun. Pero también siempre hacía chistes y hacía que el proceso sea uno divertido. And he was also a little bit stubborn sometimes. Eh, también era un poco tardarudo a veces. So he was right there in the fight any time we were um, engaging in that kind of fight. When, when one of us, including him, was ready to storm out of the room or quit, he always brought us back to the teaching about the wisdom of deliberation and collective decision making. Y él siempre estaba ahí en cualquiera de las peleas que teníamos. Cada vez que una persona se trataba de ir, siempre lo agarraba, la devolvía para recordarnos sobre la lección de la importancia de tomar decisiones de manera colectiva. So these words, might, you know, hopefully will be inspiring and important for your work today. Esperemos que estas palabras sean importantes y significantes para su trabajo hoy. And making the right decision doesn't mean that we are engaging in group think or, or blind following, but reminds us of, it reminds us that the wisdom of the collective through deliberation is more important than individual perspectives. Y tomar la decisión correcta no significa tomar una decisión ciega, más bien significa estar conscientes de la importancia de la sabiduría colectiva más allá de la sabiduría del individuo. And further, that a collective decision or position y que una decisión colectiva o pos una posición colectiva when backed up by the strength of the membership una vez que esté apoyada por eh, cada individuo en el grupo is a powerful way to confront oppressive institutions, policies, and politics in the fight for social justice and social change. Es una manera muy poderosa en la lucha en contra de leyes opresivas, personas opresivas o dinámicas opresivas. So these words about collective decision making and appropriate deliberation, I hope these words and teachings can be also valuable in the collective work that you do today and beyond today. Así que estas palabras acerca de 
el estilo de tomar decisiones colectiva y el trabajo colectivo sean palabras que los ayudan en su trabajo hoy y su trabajo más allá del día de hoy. And I also wanted to um, acknowledge Jenny Padilla, who's here, um, her, um, Jose's sister, and thank you for coming. También quiero reconocer a Jenny Padilla, la hermana de José. Gracias por venir. Thank you. Gracias. Good morning, everyone. Buenos días, todo el mundo. It's my pleasure this morning to introduce to you our guest speaker, David Bacon. Es mi placer presentar a nuestro próximo um, presentador, David Bacon. David is a writer and photojournalist based in Oakland and Berkeley, California. David es un escritor y un fotógrafo que vive en Berkeley, California. He is the associate editor at Pacific News Service and writes for Truth Out, The Nation, The American Prospect, and The San Francisco Chronicle. I have to repeat that. Um, uh, he writes for Truth Out. Trabaja para Truth Out. The Nation. The Nation. The, the American Prospect. <laughs> the American Prospect. <laughs> okay. Um, for 20 years, Bacon was a labor organizer for unions in which immigrant workers made up a large percentage of the membership. Those included the United Farm Workers, the, elect, the United Electrical Workers, the International Ladies Garment Workers, the Molders Union, as well as others. These experiences... Durante 20 años, David trabajó como organizador para distintas, eh, distintos sindicatos eh, y United. Sabina mencionó una, una serie de ellos. Um, these experiences gave him a unique insight into changing conditions in the workforce. Estas experiencias le dieron eh, un eh, conocimiento muy importante acerca de cómo cambiar las condiciones de trabajo. The impact of the global economy and migration. El impacto de la economía local, el de la economía global y la migración. And how these factors influence the struggle for workers' rights. Y cómo estos factores hacen un impacto sobre eh, las, los esfuerzos por mejorar las condiciones de trabajo para los trabajadores. He's currently also documenting popular resistance to war and attacks on immigrant, labor and civil rights. En este momento también está documentando eh, las, los esfuerzos globales en contra de la guerra y cómo mejorar las condiciones de vida para los inmigrantes. Please join me in welcoming David Bacon. Por favor, démosle la bienvenida a David Bacon. Good morning, a todos y todos. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> um, first of all, I want to thank the Farm Worker Justice Committee and Evergreen for inviting me um, bueno, to come here today. Quiero, quiero darle las gracias al Comité de Organizador del Día de Justicia para los Trabajadores y a Evergreen por invitarme acá. I just want to note that the committee is handing out free Boycott Sakuma buttons at the table there. So usually you have to pay a dollar for buttons, and you probably should anyway, but you know, everybody should be wearing one of these by the time they walk out of the room here, I hope. Estaba preguntándose si el comité estaba entregando botones gratis, y usualmente cuestan un dólar, pero parece que los están dando gratis, así que todo el mundo debería tomar un botón uh, para el final del día. Uh, so the committee asked me to talk to you a little bit today about the kind of work that I do, especially in relation to farm workers and especially in relation to what the last year's worth of work and what's been happening to farm workers over the last year all along the Pacific Coast here. El comité me pidió que por favor hablara acerca de mi trabajo con los trabajadores agrícolas y especialmente el trabajo que he estado haciendo durante el último año con los trabajadores en la costa oeste. Um, but I thought I would begin um, Hmm. You know, this clicker is not working. Our tech support people. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll just tell you when to change the slide. How's that? So, there we go. Okay. Uh, so, this is me, actually. 
Esto soy yo. Uh, check out those uh, sandals. That was the height of alternative fashion in high school and college when I was around, right? Miren uh, esas, esas sandalias. Ese era el, el momento culminante de la, eh, de la moda alternativa. Yeah. So, um, uh, what I do, what I am, is I'm a participant journalist, a participant photographer. And so I'm, I want to talk a little bit about what that is. Yo soy un fotógrafo que tiene métodos participativos y quiero hablarles un poquito acerca de qué significa eso. And so what this picture really is about is, um, this is me holding a microphone for our local community radio station, KPFA, at the same time as we were sitting in in Sproul Hall during the free speech movement. So what I did after recording some of the speeches that we were making there was I snuck the tape recorder out of the hall, snuck back into the hall, and then we all got arrested. <laughs> Esto soy yo con un micrófono durante, this was during, during what, again? We were, free speech. Free speech movement. Durante el movimiento para, um, free speech movement. Ayúdame, Alex. Rosalinda, buenos para días. El movimiento eh, en favor de el, de, uh, la expresión libre, de la libre expresión, gracias, de la libre expresión. Y en ese momento eh, yo tomé un micrófono, lo entré a, ¿fue a City Hall? Uh, al Sproul Hall, es un edificio en una universidad. En una universidad y eh, arrestaron a todo el mundo. Ya. Yeah. Um, next one. Um, so, in addition to being a... Uh, Uh, journalist and recording events and documenting them. I'm also an organizer and have been one for a long time. So this is just a picture of me facing off with a sweatshop owner in the San Gabriel Valley. Además de ser, de ser periodista, también soy organizador. Y en esta foto están viendo eh, un momento de confrontación con eh, una persona que es eh, propietario de un sweatshop en San Fernando. En el Valle de San Gabriel. En el Valle de San Gabriel. Yeah. So, um, I worked for a lot of years, next one, I worked for a lot of years for the United Farm Workers, and then after leaving the union, worked in the fields for a while, for about a year, because I needed the money. Trabajé durante muchos años para los trabajadores unidos, y después trabajé en los campos porque necesitaba la plata. Um, I learned Spanish, eventually married the daughter of two farm workers from the Philippines. Aprendí español y me casé con la hija de unos trabajadores de las Filipinas. And then learned about the history of our movement, and that's where I want to start really today. Y después aprendí acerca de la historia de nuestro movimiento, que es eh, acerca de lo cual quiero hablar hoy. So this is a picture of the farm workers, of what the farm workers movement faced in the 1930s. Esta es una foto de lo que eh, confrontaba el movimiento de trabajadores en 1930 en los 1930 s um, so in the 1930s. The first one was the and Industrial Union, and then its successor was called the United Cannery Agricultural Packing House and Allied Workers of America. Así que los trabajadores sí tenían una, un sindicato y este sindicato cambió de nombres, pero yeah. sí lo tenían. Um, but what's important to say about it is that local seven of that union was organized by Filipinos and Filipinos who lived here in Seattle and would go up to the canneries and work um, in the canneries in Alaska um, during the summer months. Lo que sí es importante decir es que eh, los, las personas que comenzaron esos sindicatos eran filipinos que trabajaban aquí en Seattle y trabajaban en, en las enlatadoras eh, acá en Seattle, pescado, yeah. en las enlatadoras de pescado. Um, and then during the winter they would go back to California and they would work as farm workers in California. So it was a union for farm workers and a union for fish packing workers. Y luego, durante el invierno, se devolvían a California a trabajar en los campos. Um, their union, Yucupao, was um, destroyed in the Cold War, and that local union, Local 7, then joined the ILWU and exists here today in the state of Washington as Local 37, or the IBU, division, Inland Bogman's division of the um, ILWU. Ese sindicato lo cerraron. Pero después vinieron acá a Seattle otra vez. Yeah, y exist, existe como parte del sindicato de distribuidores aquí en esa área misma. Um, next one. 
One of the organizers for that union um, was Larry Itliong. And Larry Itliong eventually um, was in California leading strikes and was the, he and the workers who belonged to the union that he was part of were the ones who actually began the strike in 1965 that led to the birth of the United Farm Workers, the UFW. One of the eh, organizers of the syndicate was Larry Ilyong, who really started the huelga in 1969. Yeah, the huelga famous of the huelga. 1965. What happened in Delano was that it Leong and the Filipino workers who belonged to that union asked Cesar Chavez and the Mexican workers who belonged to another organization to join them in the strike. They came together, Mexicans and Filipinos, they created a union across those national lines and that was how the United Farm Workers Union was born. Lo que ocurrió en Delong en, en ese momento fue que eh, Los trabajadores filipinos le pidieron a los trabajadores mexicanos que se unieran al movimiento y trabajaron a través de esas líneas nacionales para crear lo que conocemos como el movimiento de trabajadores. Um, this is uh, Pete Velasco, who was another leader of the Filipino union that came together. It was called AWOC, the Agricultural Workers Organizing Committee. Este es Pete Velasco, que fue otro de los trabajadores que organizó eh, a los filipinos durante ese tiempo. Um, at the height of the United Farm Workers Union, whoops. Yeah, okay. This is Cesar Chavez. I like this uh, picture of Caesar because it doesn't make him look saintly. In fact, there should be little horns coming up from <laughs> his head there, given what the smile is like, right? Me gusta esta foto de Cesar Chavez porque no lo hace ver como un santo. De hecho, deberían haber pequeños eh, eh, cuernos saliéndole de su cabeza. But at its height, um, we won elections in the UFW, I think for representing maybe 120,000 workers. And at the height of the union, I think we actually had as dues paying members at any given moment, maybe 40 to 50,000 people. I guess that's right. En, en su momento culminante, ganamos las elecciones. Elecciones representando a 120,000 trabajadores. Representando 120,000 trabajadores. Um, this is Dolores Huerta, another one of the organizers of the union. And I think this is, tells us a little bit about the culture of the union and the culture of farm workers, because this is Dolores meeting with workers while they're negotiating a contract and basically explaining what was happening in negotiations. And you can see talking one on one. This is Dolores, otra de las organizadoras del sindicato. Y esta foto muestra un poquito acerca de la cultura del sindicato eh, porque muestra a Dolores realmente trabajando y organizando y hablando, dialogando eh, frente a frente en ese momento. And so you can see here the kind of support that the union had. This is at the end of a march to Sacramento with thousands of people in front of the state capitol. Aquí podemos ver la, la clase de apoyo que tenía el sindicato en ese momento, la cantidad de personas que llegaron a apoyar el, el sindicato. So now we have farm worker unions, not just in California with the UFW, but a lot of different places in the United States. Y ahora tenemos sindicatos de trabajadores en muchos lugares de los Estados Unidos, no solamente en California. This is the union for people who work in the mushroom sheds in um, uh, New Jersey and Pennsylvania, called CATA, Comité de Apoyo de Trabajadores Agrícolas. Y esta es eh, una foto de trabajadores que trabajan para un sindicato. Eh, Eh, trabajadores de un sindicato que trabajan en, eh, La, en los hongos, en los hongos, champiñones. Um, there are farm worker unions in Arizona, in South Texas, in Florida, in North Carolina. Uh, this is another one in New Jersey. Hay, hay sindicatos en muchísimos lugares: Texas, California, New Jersey. Tobacco workers organizing in North Carolina with the Farm Labor Organizing Committee. Trabajadores que recogen tabaco en California. Um, I met Rosalinda um, when the United Farm Workers Union began its campaign in Watsonville in the late 1990s. 
Yo conocí a Rosalinda eh, a finales de los años 1990. Um, what was important about this period of time was this was a period in which um, the indigenous workers coming from Oaxaca became a really big part of the workforce among farm workers all along the west coast here. Este fue un momen, momento muy importante en el desarrollo del movimiento agrícola porque fue un momento en que muchos trabajadores indígenas llegaron desde Oaxaca a trabajar aquí en los Estados Unidos. Um, so again, these are sort of a little bit of the uh, images to show you what organizing is kind of looks like, or at least looked like in that campaign. Here are organizers going out to the fields and asking workers what they want to demand from the growers for wages or for benefits or improvements, and they're going to write on that butcher paper down what the workers in the field at lunchtime are telling them um, they want to fight for. Esas son algunas imágenes que les muestran lo que ocurre durante el proceso de organización de los trabajadores. Aquí vemos, podemos ver un momento en que los trabajadores están dialogando con alguien quien les está eh, preguntando qué es lo que quieren y tienen un en una cartelera grande donde están escribiendo eh, todas sus, eh, las cosas que ellos están pidiendo. Um, so, of course, the growers aren't really happy about this, and so in Watsonville they fired a lot of workers, and then workers had to fight and march in order to demand their jobs back. And so these are workers who were fired in the strawberries who are demanding that the growers hire them back. Y claro, esto no es exactamente algo que les gusta a los dueños, de estas fincas, así que muchas veces a los trabajadores los echan de sus trabajos y aquí vemos una foto donde muestra esto. And then while workers were fighting in the strawberries, other workers in Salinas working as lettuce and broccoli cutters, they got tired of waiting around for the union to come to them, and so they went out on strike and told the union to come and help them. Y aquí podemos ver otros trabajadores que eh, trabajan Recogiendo lechuga y recogiendo brócoli. Eh. Sorry, what was the, the second part? Um, es, they were, estaban exigiendo que, uh, well, they were asking the union to come and help them. Y le estaban pidiendo la, al sindicato que por favor viniera y las ayudara. And so here are the strikers, they went on strike at this company, and here are the strikers um, calling on the workers to leave the fields, and there are the sheriffs basically trying to make sure that those strikers don't go into the field and pull the workers out. Entonces aquí vemos a un sheriff que está tratando de que las personas que están tratando de romper la huelga no entren, perdón, al revés. And here are um, strikers who actually did get into that field and they are talking to workers on the broccoli machine saying, we have a strike, come off the machine, stop work. Y aquí vemos eh, En la, en la huelga, personas que están apoyando la huelga, que le están pidiendo, los, le están diciendo a los trabajadores que Sí, y están exigiendo que los que están trabajando en la máquina salen de la máquina y se junten con, con la huelga. Y um, fueron arrestados el momento después. So they were arrested just moments after taking the picture here. So, um, when I stopped being a union organizer and began doing what I do now, which is basically writing and, and, and photography. Cuando, cuando, actually, can we do shorter? Uh, cuando, cuando dejé de ser un organizador y empecé a hacer lo que hago en este momento, que es escritura y fotografía. We began a project to document the living and working conditions of indigenous workers. Empezamos un proyecto para documentar las condiciones de trabajo de los trabajadores indígenas. And so I want to talk a little bit about what those conditions are. Así que quiero hablar un poquito acerca de esas condiciones. Um, there are about 350,000 indigenous farm workers in the United States. Oh, this is another story. En este momento en los Estados Unidos hay más o menos 350,000 trabajadores indígenas. This is basically the strikers trying to convince people who are being brought in to break the strike by the grower in that bus to get off the bus and not go to work. Eh, aquí estamos viendo a unas personas que eh, están tratando de convencer a... Sorry, can you do it again? I need, I need to shorter it. Yeah, sorry. Um, they're trying to convince the people who are on the bus en to get off the bus. Están tratando de convencer a las personas que están en el bus que por favor se bajen del bus. Um, so there are about 
350,000 indigenous farm workers in the United States, at least according to the Frente Indígena. In this moment, according to the Frente Indígena, there are about 350,000 indigenous workers in the United States. And what we mean by indigenous are people who are coming from communities, primarily in Mexico, where people are speaking languages that were old long before Columbus ever got to Y lo que queremos decir por indígena son personas en México principalmente que hablan lenguas que se hablaban mucho antes de que llegó de, de que llegara Colón. Um, and that as I said that population is rising very quickly. Y como he dicho esa población está incrementando muy rápidamente. In 20 years um, from 1991 to um, 2000 and 11, it went from 7% of the farm worker workforce to about a third. In 20 years, that population went from 7% of the population to almost a third of the population. If you go out to the fields, there are about 23 different languages that are people are speaking in the fields today. If you go to the campus, you can see that the people are speaking more or less than one. 23, 23, 23 idiomas indígenas. Um, so the the and and Los principales eh, lenguajes indígenas que se hablan en este momento son mixteco, zapoteco, eh, triqui y purépecha. purépecha. But there are also smaller ones, amuscos, chatinos. Um, ya hay people. lenguajes eh, que tienen poblaciones más pequeñas como los que acaba de mencionar David. So, what are people making in the fields today? Así que qué es lo que están ganando las personas en los campos en este momento? Um, the median family income for an indigenous farm worker family today. Más o menos uh, la lo que se gana una tra una familia indígena en este momento is about $13,000 a year. Es más o menos 13,000 dólares al año. A mestizo farm worker family, in other words, a non-indigenous farm worker family, but are, who are coming from Mexico as immigrants, makes about twenty-two thousand dollars a year. Una familia mestiza, es decir, una familia eh, que no viene de una comunidad indígena en México, gana más o menos veinte veintidós mil dólares al año. So you can see the discrimination that exists against indigenous people. Not just in Mexico, but here too. Así que podemos ver con estos números la clase de discrimina discriminación que se hace en contra de las comunidades indígenas que llegan a los Estados Unidos. According to a study of indigenous workers in California, one third of those workers made more than minimum wage, a third of those workers made the minimum wage, and a third of those workers made less than minimum wage. De acuerdo a un estudio que se hizo, más o menos un tercio de los de sus trabajadores hacían un poco más del de salario mínimo, un tercio hacían el salario mínimo y un tercio hacían menos del salario mínimo. Tens of thousands of people. Miles de personas, diez, so más when, de diez mil. When you ask yourself why is the Santos family all living in one room, that's why. Así que si ustedes se preguntan por qué la familia Santos está viviendo en un solo cuarto, esa es la razón por la cual esto ocurre. Farm workers are young. Los trabajadores, trabajadores agrícolas son jóvenes. The average age for farm workers in the United States today is 20. La edad eh, general de los trabajadores es 20 años. So these are just images that show you what the, um, what the cost is for families and for people of kind of job insecurity and low wages. Estas son imágenes que les muestran a ustedes el costo hacia las personas de no tener seguridad en su trabajo y tener eh, realmente un sueldo muy bajo. So some people are living in shacks, some people live lots of people in one room, some people are living out of doors. Así que con, las personas están viviendo en condiciones muy precarias en eh, algunas veces ni siquiera tienen eh, donde dormir. So these are just, you know, photographs of what work life is like. Esas son fotografías de la vida de estos trabajadores. And I know we're going to hear from Ramon about that, so I'm not even going to try and describe it. Um, other than to say again how young people are. You know, this is a common part of the experience of many farm worker families where um, 
the sons and daughters of parents after school or on the weekends go out and work with their parents. And the reason is real simple, and that is that families have a hard time surviving just on the labor of adults. Y esta, aquí están viendo unas imágenes que no voy a tratar de describir y eh, es una eh, es algo que les ocurre muy a menudo a los trabajadores agrícolas donde sus hijos tienen que trabajar durante los fines de semana porque el sueldo que se ganan los padres como adultos no es suficiente. When I took that this picture of uh, Salomón Sarita, um, that was during the day on a school day. Y esta foto que tomé de Sarita fue durante un día de colegio. So this project is also done in cooperation with two important organizations. One is California Rural Legal Assistance. Así que este proyecto lo hago en colaboración con varias organizaciones. Una es eh, the California Legal Assistance. And the other one is the Frente Indígena de Organizaciones Binacionales. Y la otra es el Frente Indígena de Organizaciones Binacionales. And so part of the project is to also document the work of these organizations. Así que parte del proyecto es documentar el trabajo que hacen estas organizaciones. So this is Lorenzo Oropesa, he's a, a Mixteco community worker for CRLA and also a leader of the Frente Indígena. Este es un eh, líder del Frente Indígena, él es un trabajador Mixteco. And he is um, talking to a worker who is living out of doors, y está uh, under trees, and uh, telling him what his rights are as a worker. Está hablando con un trabajador que eh, no tiene donde vivir y le está eh, diciendo cuáles son sus derechos como trabajador. This is uh, Irma Luna, a Mixteca um, in the Frente Indígena and CRLA, and she's facing it off with the foreman there and trying to tell the foreman that he has to bring out bathrooms and drinking water for the crew that's working there. Y esta es otra organizadora del Frente Indígena, en ese momento estaba hablando con el um, foreman, con el capataz, yeah. um, y está diciéndole la importancia de tener baños en el lugar donde trabajan. Uh, these are just pictures of the activities of the Frente Indígena and the people who belong to it. Esas son fotos de las personas del Frente Indígena y la gente que trabaja en él. Part of this is also to show what the culture of indigenous people is. So this is one from one of the Kelegetsa dance festivals in California. También yeah, Kelegetsa is up here in Washington, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. También podemos ver en estas fotos un poco de la cultura indígena eh, un, algunos de, las, de los festivales y reuniones que tienen. This is Gaspar Rivera. He's actually kind of a teddy bear, but this picture makes him look pretty fierce. Este es Gaspar Rivera, que es un, casi como un osito. Okay, so, um, three years ago, when farm workers went out on strike in Burlington, así que hace tres años cuando los trabajadores agrícolas eh, hicieron una huelga en, en Burlington, um, I got a call from Rosalinda. Recibí una llamada de Rosalinda. And um, to come up and, and try and document what was going on. Que viniera y me ayudara a documentar lo que estaba pasando. And I went and called Al Jazeera, and they agreed to um, pay for an airplane ticket, so I got on an airplane to, and came. Y llamé a Al Jazeera y les pedí que por favor eh, vinieran a, a documentarlo y me pagaron un eh, viaje en avión para poder venir a hacer eso. And so there are other people who are going to tell the story of the strike, and I'm not going to try and do that. Um, but I do want to show you some photographs from it and say what my function was in coming up there. Hay otras personas que van a darles la historia de esa huelga, así que yo no lo voy a hacer, pero sí quiero mostrarle algunas fotos de que yo tomé durante ese tiempo para documentar la huelga. So this is uh, Felimón Piñeda, who is now the vice president of Familias Unidas. Um, and he was talking to me and showing me what the conditions were in the labor camp that he was angry about. Este es Filemón Piñeda, el vicepresidente de Familias Unidas, y en ese momento me estaba mostrando un poco acerca de las condiciones que había and en I ese momento the, para los, eh, los miembros de Familias Unidas. And I think the picture sort of speaks for itself. Y la foto es, dice lo suficiente. These are strikers in the labor camp during the strike. So you can see it's a family strike. That's why it's called Familias Unidas. It's not just single people. Y estos son huelguistas y como pueden ver, se, esta es la razón por la cual se llaman familias unidas, no son personas individuales. Who do we have here? <laughs> this is Ramon. Este and Ramon. This is during the strike and this is the, this is after negotiations and Ramon is coming back to the camp 
and I'm explaining what happened or didn't happen in negotiations. Esto es durante justo después de las negociaciones y Ramón está volviendo al al campamento a explicar qué pasó, qué no pasó durante las negociaciones. And what I love about this picture, first of all, I love Ramón and the, the drama. But me, me encanta el, el drama de esta foto. But I like the way people are looking at him or not looking at him, right? Pero también me gusta la forma en que las personas lo miran o no lo miran. Yeah, I think his, his most attentive listener is the little boy that's standing there. Creo que la más está escuchando en esta foto es el niño. And this is Rosalinda. Y esta es Rosalinda. And these three women are fighting to get the jobs of checking the weight of the blueberries, which the grower, Sakuma Farms, would only give to white people. Young Entonces, white people. It, it's, it's white teenage girls. And these, gr these young women have been working every season up there since they were little. So they know a hundred times more than those people, those young white women that the grower was hiring. And so they were demanding, we want those jobs. This and is here's Rosalinda telling them, here's how we're going to organize to go and get them. Entonces estas tres mujeres están eh, peleando para poder conseguir el trabajo de eh, pesar las blueberries porque ese es, esos eran trabajos que solamente les daban a personas blancas eh, a pesar de que estas mujeres tenían mucho más conocimiento que las personas que usualmente recibían esos trabajos. So this is the entrance into the camp. Esta es la entrada al campamento. This is the back entrance, trying to make sure that strike breakers aren't able to get in and out. Esta es la parte de atrás para asegurarse de que las personas que están tratando de romper la huelga no, no entren. Um, this is the binational coordinator of the Frente Indígena who came up to spend some time with the strikers when the strike first started. Este es el coordinador del Frente Indígena Binacional que vino a trabajar yeah. con eh, las personas que estaban involucradas en la huelga. These are the children of strikers with their own picket line at the gate into the camp. Estos son los hijos de las personas que estaban involucradas en la huelga que ellos mismos también tenían su su propia su propio grupo que estaba participando. And one of the best parts of being the photographer for Familias Unidas was to see this picture wind up on T-shirts, on buttons, on stickers. You know, I mean, you 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 feel, you really feel as a photographer that you made. A contribution. Una de las mejores cosas de, de ser el fotógrafo para Familias Unidas es que, mucha, que eh, después esa misma foto terminó en camisetas, botones, eh, distintos eh, elementos del, del movimiento. Entonces realmente me hizo sentir que había hecho una contribución. So after the strike was over and a lot of the workers went back to California. Así que cuando se terminó la huelga y los trabajadores volvieron a California. And so with the Frente Indígena we began meeting with those workers who were in California during that time. Con el Frente Indígena empezamos a reunirnos con los trabajadores que estaban en California en ese momento. And so in order to get support we decided that we needed to put kind of like a human face on the strikers. Así que para conseguir más apoyo decidimos que necesitábamos darle una cara humana a esta huelga. And so the person who volunteered was Rosario Ventura. Y la persona que eh, llegó como voluntaria fue Rosario Ventura. And so I want to um, read you a little bit, because what we did was we took her, um, we interviewed her and took what she said and took photographs and we turned it into an article about the strike that sort of saw it through her eyes. Así que lo que hicimos fue que tomamos fotos, la entrevistamos y e hicimos un artículo que mostraba la huelga a través de sus ojos. So I want to just read a little bit of her, um, of what she said. Así que quiero leer un poquito acerca de lo que ella dijo. She said, I came from Oaxaca in 2001 from San Martín y Tuñoso. Vine de Oaxaca en el 2001 de San Martín y Tuñoso. This is a tricky town and that's what I grew up speaking. Es un pueblo tricky, eso fue lo que yo crecí hablando. My mother and father were farmers and they worked on the land that belongs to the town. Mis padres eran eh, trabajadores, trabajaban en el campo eh, y lo hacían en, las, eh, en los campos que pertenecían al pueblo. It was just enough to grow what we ate, but sometimes there was nothing to eat and no money to buy food. Eh, crecíamos lo suficiente para comer, pero a veces no había eh, que comer. 
There wasn't much work in Oaxaca, so my parents would go to Sinaloa um, to work. No había mucho trabajo en Oaxaca, así que a veces mis padres iban a Sinaloa a trabajar. I began to go with them when I was young. Empecé a ir con ellos cuando era joven. I don't remember how old I was. No, recu no recuerdo cuántos años tenía en ese momento. It cost a lot of money to go to school, and my parents had no way to get it. Costaba mucha plata ir al colegio y mis padres no tenían cómo conseguir esa plata. My brothers went to school, though. I was the only one that didn't go because I was a girl. Mis hermanos fueron al colegio, pero yo no lo hice porque era una mujer. When I told my dad that I wanted to come to the U.S., he tried to convince me not to leave. Cuando le dije a mi padre que iba a ir a los Estados Unidos, él trató de convencerme de que no lo hiciera. When you leave, it is forever. That's what he said, because we never return. Cuando tú te vas, es para siempre, me dijo él, porque nunca vas a volver. You won't even call, he said. Ni siquiera vas a llamar, me dijo. And it did turn out that way. Y así terminó pasando. Now I don't call him because I know that if I do, it's going to make him sad. He'll ask, when are you coming back? And what can I say? No lo llamo porque lo va a entristecer. Eh, me va a decir, ¿cuándo vas a volver? ¿Y qué le voy a decir? I can't get the money to go back. There is no money. No tengo la plata para volver. No hay plata. And there's nothing to eat in San Martín y Tuñoso. Y no hay nada que comer en San Martín y Tuñoso. I, would say, I thought I would save up something here in return, but it's hard here too. Pensé que iba a conseguir plata aquí donde estoy trabajando, pero también es difícil. It's the same there and it is the same here in the U.S. Es igual allá que lo que es acá. We work to try to get ahead, but we never do. Trabajamos para poder llegar un poco más allá del lugar donde estamos, pero nunca lo hacemos. We're always earning just enough to buy food and pay rent. Everything gets used up. Eh, conseguimos suficiente plata para pagar la renta, para comer, y eso es todo. At Sukuma Farms, the company was always hard on us. Durante, en las um, Sukuma Farms, las condiciones siempre eran muy, fuert, muy duras para nosotros. They would tell us, you came to pick and you have to make weight. Nos decían, ustedes vinieron a recoger y tienen que cumplir el peso requerido. ¿Cómo se dice make weight? ¿Cómo que tiene que...? Piscar lo suficiente. Yeah, piscar suficiente. Cumplir con la cuota, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. Ok, right. Um, if you don't make weight, they won't let you work for a few days. Si no cumples el peso, eh, o la cuota del peso, eh, well, sorry, what is that? they won't let you work for a few days. No te van a dejar trabajar durante varios días. And if you still can't make weight, they pull you out of the field and fire you. Y si no cumples el peso, te sacan de los campos y te botan del trabajo. But when you're working, and you take what you pick to be weight, They always cheat you of two or, th two or, th two or three pounds. Pero cuando eh, llegas del trabajo y pesan, siempre te, eh, te dicen que, pesca que pescaste o que recogiste menos de lo que realmente hiciste. Yeah. I've always lived in the labor camp during the picking season. Siempre viví en el campo durante eh, la época de, eh, de pescar. Um, When we're in Washington, we have to save up for the winter season because there's no work in California till April. Cuando estamos en Washington, eh, tenemos que... Perdona. Necesitamos uh, uh, ahorrar dinero um, para la próxima temporada porque no hay... Porque no hay trabajo en California. No um, the trip to Washington is expensive, about $250 in gas and food. Llegar a Washington es muy caro, más o menos $250 entre gasolina y comida. And if we don't have enough money, we have to ask for a loan and then we get food from the food bank when we get to Washington. Y si no tenemos eh, suficiente, necesitamos pedir eh, plata prestada eh, o conseguir nuestra comida del banco de comida en Washington. The strike started when the company fired Federico. La huelga empezó cuando la compañía eh, echó de su trabajo a Federico. We wanted Sakuma to raise the price and the company refused. Queríamos que Sakuma subiera los precios, pero la, la compañía dijo que no. They told us if we want to work, work. La compañía nos dijo que si queríamos trabajar, que trabajáramos. And then they accused Federico of starting a protest. Y luego acusaron a Federico de empezar una protesta. They went to his cabin to kick him out of the camp. Fueron a su casa y lo sacar, y para sacarlo del campo. That's when we stopped work to get his job back. 
Así es que ese fue el momento en que paramos para poder conseguir que le devolvieran su trabajo. We were also upset about the conditions in the labor camp. Todos estábamos eh, descontentos, descontentos eh, y queríamos que le devolvieran el trabajo. The mattress they gave us was torn and dirty and the wire was coming out and poked us at night. La cama eh, era muy mala y las eh, rompido y estaba sucio. roto y sucio y eh, y el alambre los alambres salían de, de, le, de la cama. We're accustomed to sleeping with the children, but the bed was so small we couldn't even fit on it. Estábamos acostumbrados a dormir con los niños, pero la cama era tan pequeña que ni siquiera cabíamos. There were cockroaches and rats. Había cucarachas y ratas. The roof leaked when it rained. El techo eh, tenía huecos y eh, pasaba el agua por, por los huecos. They just put bags in the holes and it still leaked. All my kids' clothes were wet. Eh, poníamos eh, plástico, pero seguía cayendo el agua y toda la ropa de mis hijos estaba mojada. They told us they would change things and the county inspector would come and check the cabin. Nos dijeron que las cosas iban a cambiar y que el inspector del eh, condado iba a venir a inspeccionar. But the company man in charge of the camp told me, if the inspector comes, don't show him your bed. Pero la persona encargada del, de los campos dijo que si llegaba el inspector, que por favor no le mostráramos la cama. Don't say anything or you will have a lot of problems. No digas nada, si no vas a tener muchos problemas. So when the inspector came, the company man followed him and didn't let me say anything. Así que cuando llegó el inspector, eh, la persona del, del eh, Sacuma Farms lo siguió y no me dejó hablar con él. They always try to make us afraid to speak up. Siempre nos hacían tener miedo de hablar o de decir algo. If you ask for another five cents, they fire you. Si pedías cinco centavos más, te echaban del trabajo. They threatened to remove us from the camp because of the strike. Nos amenazaron de sacarnos de los de nuestro campamento a causa de la huelga. They fired Ramon because he talked back to them. Echaron a Ramón de su trabajo porque habló eh, y tuvo el coraje de, de decirles lo que pensaba. But thank God he had the courage to talk. Pero gracias a Dios tuvo el coraje para hacerlo. There will be strikes again if the company doesn't come to its senses. Va a haber más huelgas si la compañía eh, no mejora las condiciones. We can't leave things like this. No podemos dejar que las cosas sigan así. We're making them rich and making ourselves poor. Los estamos haciendo a ellos ricos y a nosotros pobres. I think these things can change if we all keep at it. Creo que las cosas pueden cambiar si seguimos trabajando y luchando. But we won't let them keep on going like this. Pero no los vamos a dejar seguir así. We have to change them. Tenemos que cambiar las cosas. That's the reality. So, one of the things that happened was that um, Sukuma Farms began bringing in Guest workers. Así que una de las cosas que pasó que fue que Sacuma Farms empezó a traer trabajadores de México bajo el programa de guest workers. Ah, here we go. Um, during the strike, and then the next year they said they were going to replace all of us, all the workers, with guest workers. Esto ocurrió durante la huelga y dijeron que el próximo año nos iban a reemplazar a todos con trabajadores eh, que venían de México bajo ese programa. Uh, so Ramon and Felimon and Rosalinda and the union um, got statements from the workers, from the strikers, saying that they were available and ready to work. Así que Ramon y Rosalinda y Filemón consiguieron que los trabajadores eh, certificaran que todos estaban dispuestos a trabajar. And then in San Francisco, Jose Galicia here, who was a striker, um, delivered those petitions to the Department of Labor and other strikers delivered them to offices of the DOL in Seattle and in Chicago. Así que la persona que se muestra acá está entregando esas, eh, esas certificaciones al Departamento de Trabajo eh, y a otros lugares en eh, Seattle, ¿cierto? Mm -hmm. in, in Chicago. Y en Chicago. And we wrote an article about it for the Nation magazine and exposed it and that's uh, why they were stopped. That's why they were not able to do it. Y escribimos un artículo para la revista The Nation y presentamos lo que había pasado y así fue como se supo lo que había ocurrido. And then Ramon came to San Francisco and strikers went to other places 
beginning the boycott of Driscoll Berries. Y luego Ramón um, eh, fue a San Francisco y otros trabajadores fueron a otros lugares y así fue como se eh, empezó el boicot de las eh, de las fresas y los blueberries en eh, de Sacoma Farms y de Driscolls. Um, this year workers working for Driscoll in Mexico also went on strike. Este año los trabajadores que estaban trabajando para Driscolls en México también eh, empezaron una huelga. And just like the farm workers movement in the United States, the farm workers movement in Baja California also has a history. It didn't just start this year. Y al igual que el movimiento de los trabajadores agrícolas en los Estados Unidos, el movimiento de los trabajadores en México también tiene una larga historia, no empezó hace poco. And this is one reason why there's a movement like that. It's because this is what the conditions are like. In other words, a lot of kids working because their families can't survive if they don't. Y esta es una de las razones por las cuales existe ese movimiento. En Labor que camps made out of uh, shipping pallets. Hay, hay niños que están trabajando porque el sueldo de los adultos no es suficiente. Eh, And labor camps that are made out of uh, scrap. Y hay casas que están hechas de materiales reciclados. And then they have leaders as well of their movement. This is Beatriz Chavez, who died this year, who was a leader of the rebellions in San Quentin in um, 1984 and 1996. And she was then imprisoned for three years by the Mexican government for leading workers in efforts to build housing in San Quintín. Y esta es otra de las líderes del movimiento en San Quintín y el gobierno mexicano eh, la, la puso en, en la, la metió en la cárcel por haber eh, empezado huelgas. Y, y ella estuvo tres años en la cárcel. Vivienda, específicamente y específicamente para pedir vivienda para los trabajadores allá. And her health was ruined by being in prison for so long, which is one reason why she died this year. Y su salud realmente empezó a declinar eh, por estar en la cárcel y ella murió este año. And this is Julio Sandoval, another tricky community and worker leader who was also in prison for the same thing. Y este fue Julio Sandoval, que es otro líder tricky que también eh, terminó en la cárcel por organizar a, a las personas, a los trabajadores. This is what it looks like. Um, living in, this is the community of Santa Maria Los Pinos in the San Quintin Valley. Um, yes. So. Estas son las condiciones de vida en, en, en Santa Maria. Los Pinos. En Santa Maria de Los Pinos. The strike and the movement of workers in San Quintin this last year actually started um, in an effort to, fight, to force the government to provide water for people. El movimiento de San Quintín realmente comenzó en un esfuerzo por conseguir agua para los trabajadores, para San, la gente. Because San Quintín is a desert, and the growers have pumped up so much water from the aquifers and the water table that salt water has gotten into the water, and so the growers they built desalination plants to irrigate the fields, but there's no water for people who live in the community. They have to buy it from trucks or in bottles. Así que eh, el problema es que San Quintín es un desierto y eh, las fincas que están ahí han chupado todo el agua de eh, las aguas subterráneas y han creado plantas para de, desalinizar el agua eh, porque la agua salada se ha metido eh, en, en los depósitos de agua debajo de la tierra, así que los trabajadores ahora necesitan comprar su agua embotellada. And so this year, uh, or last year, um, they decided that in addition to fighting over the water, they would start fighting over the wages. Así que eh, este año y el año pasado, este año el año pasado empezaron eh, un nuevo esfuerzo donde están peleando no solamente por el agua, pero también por sus eh, sueldos. Um, and they also, as workers did in Washington, made a decision to form an independent union Um, in the case of the workers in Mexico, because the official union structure is very corrupt. Y al igual que los trabajadores en Washington decidieron que iban a crear su propio sindicato, eh, un sindicato independiente, porque los eh, había mucha corrupción en los otros sindicatos. Entonces decidieron hacer un sindicato independiente. So the police fired on the workers and and drove through their communities in um, pickup trucks 
um, shooting rubber bullets and, and beating people up in their houses. Así que les llegó la policía y les disparó. Eh, entraron en sus camionetas por el campamento eh, y le estaban disparando a la gente con balas de, eh, de goma. And so the workers got angry and this is what happened as a result. You can see right there. Así que los trabajadores se pusieron eh, se pusieron bravos y decidieron eh, alzarse. This is a police station. It was burned. Y esta es, es la estación. Es una estación de policía que los trabajadores terminaron quemando. Y lo importante que saber sobre los trabajadores en San Quentin es que, como los trabajadores en California y como los trabajadores en Familias Unidas, la gente está todos coming really from the same set of towns in Oaxaca. They are all migrants out of Oaxaca. Lo, lo importante que necesitamos saber acerca de eh, este movimiento o grupo de trabajadores es que casi todos los trabajadores vienen de las mismas de los mismos pueblos en Oaxaca. People know each other and they talk back and forth. Las personas se conocen y se com y comunican los unos co con los otros. And so now they're talking to each other, Familias Unidas and the union in um, in uh, Baja California. Así que ahora, Familias Unidas y los trabajadores en Baja California están comunicándose los unos con los otros, están hablando. And doing the same kinds of things to bring their case into the public. Y están haciendo cosas similares para que su, ca su caso eh, llegue a la atención del público. So this is a bus caravan that they brought up from San Quentin to Tijuana to the border to Así show what was happening to them. Así que esta es una caravana de buses que llegó desde la frontera para mostrar lo que está pasando con los trabajadores. So, aumento salario means wage raise, raise the wages. These are some of the leaders of the Alianza uh, marching in Tijuana. Bonifacio al... Martinez, who's a friend of Felimon Piñera here in Washington State, and others. Esos son algunos de los líderes eh... de, lo, de la Alianza de la marchando Alianza. en Tijuana. Um, these are uh, the women who are leaders of the Alianza and leaders of the workers' movement. Whoop, 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 whoop. Too fast, too fast. Estas son algunas de las mujeres líderes de Backwards. la Alianza hey, del, uh, del movimiento de so trabajadores. So they marched up to the border wall in Tijuana, right where the border wall was. Así que llegaron hasta la hasta la, la el muro en la frontera. Um, and then. Here are workers doing the same thing last year in um, Burlington. Aquí hay trabajadores que están haciendo lo mismo en Burlington. And I just want to end by reading a little bit from a woman who works in California to show you what kind of impact this movement is having on farm workers all over the West Coast, regardless of whether people belong to a union or not. Les voy a leer un poquito acerca de algo que eh, dijo una mujer que es parte del movimiento para mostrarles el impacto que este movimiento ha tenido en los trabajadores en toda la costa oeste, así eh, estén oficialmente en un sindicato o no. So this is Rosalía Martínez. Esta es Rosalía Martínez. She says, I'm a triqui from Rio Venado in Oaxaca. Soy una eh, mujer triqui de Río Venado, Oaxaca. I've been here for seven years working in the fields all the time. Estaba aquí siete años trabajando en los campos todo el tiempo. I talked to her in Greenfield, the town in the Salinas Valley. Hablé con ella en Greenfield, que es un pueblo en el eh, Valle de Salinas. Right now I'm picking, picking peas. En este momento estoy recogiendo arvejas. Um, other times of the year I work in the broccoli. En otros momentos del año recojo brócoli. The worst part about working in the peas is that you have to work on your knees. Lo peor de estar recogiendo arvejas es que tienes que arrodillarte para recogerlas. After a day on your knees, they hurt a lot, and then when you stop, it's hard to extend your legs. Después de todo un día de estar arrodillada, eh, duele mucho y después es muy difícil extender tus piernas. It hurts even when they give you a break for 15 minutes every two hours. Te duele a pesar de que te den eh, tiempo para descansar durante 15 minutos cada dos horas. I don't take pills for the pain, but I know a lot of people who do. Yo no tomo nada para mejorar el dolor, pero sé que hay personas que sí lo hacen. Sometimes your knees break down. That's happened to a lot of people. A veces las rodillas eh, se descomponen, se eh, dañan, y eso le ha pasado a muchas personas. Their knees go out permanently and they can't work anymore. Sus rodillas eh, se dañan permanentemente y ya no pueden trabajar más. 
Another problem is the dust which has chemicals in it. Otro problema es el polvo que tiene químicos en él. By now most people who work in the peas have problems with their eyes. En este momento la mayoría de las personas que trabajan recogiendo arvejas tienen problemas en sus ojos. And what they pay us is not fair. Y lo que nos pagan no es justo. They want you to pick 130 pounds in 10 hours. Te piden que, que recojas 130 libras en 10 horas. And the piece rate is 45 cents, so we make very little. Y lo que te pagan son 45 centavos, que es muy poco. The hourly wage is supposed to be $9 an hour, but when you're working in the piece rate, it's less. Eh, eh, la cantidad que te deberían pagar por hora son nueve dólares, pero realmente lo que te pagan es mucho, me mucho menos que eso. The tricky people do not agree with the low wages. Las comunidades triquis no están de acuerdo con estos salarios, que son muy bajos. We want a salary that our work deserves. Queremos un salario eh, que es justo con el trabajo que hacemos. And when we complain about the wages, they tell us, if you want to work, there's the work, and if you don't, so what? Y cuando decimos algo sobre nuestros salarios, nos dicen, mire, ahí está el trabajo, si lo quiere, tómelo, y si no. Si las personas se organizan y piden eh, mejores condiciones de trabajo, yo creo que las cosas podrían cambiar. Many of my coworkers are afraid they'll lose their jobs. Muchos de los trabajadores, eh, de los otros trabajadores, tienen miedo de perder sus trabajos. But I heard about what was happening in San Quintín on Facebook. Pero yo vi lo que había pasado en San, Quint en San Quintín a través de Facebook. I worked down there for a number of years picking tomatoes. Trabajé ahí durante muchos años recogiendo tomates. And I heard about what they did in Washington State. Y oí lo que había pasado en el estado de Washington. I think what they did there was really good. Y creo que lo, pasó, lo que eh, hicieron ahí es muy bueno. They tried to do something for themselves and we agree with what they did. Tra trataron de hacer algo por, por sí mismos y yo creo que lo que hicieron fue muy bueno. We come from the same towns. We're brothers and sisters. Venimos de los mismos pueblos. Somos hermanos y hermanas. We are the same community. Somos la misma comunidad. We are indigenous people, and we have to do whatever we can to keep our children eating, no matter what they pay. Somos personas indígenas y necesitamos hacer lo que necesitamos hacer para darle de comer a nuestros hijos. But if we don't work and harvest the crops, there's nothing for the growers either. Pero si no, eh, con nuestro trabajo no recogemos eh, la comida. Tampoco va a haber nada para las personas que son dueñas de las fincas. What we demand from the growers is that they recognize that just as we work for them, they should work for us. Lo que pedimos de los dueños de las fincas es que así como trabajamos para ellos, que ellos también trabajen para nosotros. Things should be more equal between us. Las cosas deberían ser más eh, justas entre nosotros. Thank you. Gracias. Next, we're going to hear from Rosalinda Guillén, who you saw in the photos, as well as Ramon Torres. Gracias. Vamos a escuchar eh, de Rosalinda Guillén, quien viste en las fotos, y también de Ramon Torres. Uh, Rosalinda Guillén moved to Washington at age 10, working as part of the immigrant farm labor community in Washington State. Eh, Rosalinda se mudó a Washington a la edad de 10, eh, trabajando en la comunidad de trabajadores agrícolas en el estado. She's been a longtime labor organizer working with United Farm Workers. She also helped to organize Chateau Saint Michel, Washington's largest winery. Um, ha tenido una historia de organizar eh, sindicatos que es bastante larga y también trabajó con organizar eh, trabajadores para una vinera. She's currently the co-founder and executive director of Community to Community. Es la cofundadora y directora de Comunidad a Comunidad. A place-based grassroots, um, una organización uh, eco-feminist organization, eh, ecofeminista, uh, committed to creating alliances to strengthen local and global movements, dedicada a crear alianzas de movimientos locales y globales, working towards social, economic, and environmental justice, trabajando para justicia social, económica. Eh, en, Social economica. Uh, Familias Unidas por la Justicia is being represented by Ramon Torres. Uh, it's an independent farm worker union. Eh, Familias Unidas por la Justicia es una 
Un sindicato independiente dirigido por Ramón Torres. Um, it's working with La Alianza, uh, Alianza as you saw in David's uh, photos. Eh, y ellos trabajan con la Alianza, como pudieron ver en las fotos de David. Which is a farm worker union in San Canton, Mexico. Que, que es una, un sindicato de trabajadores agrícolas en San Quintín, México. So please welcome me in, uh, please join me in welcoming Ramón and Rosalinda. Un round of applause for Ramón y Rosalinda. first I think I want to thank uh, everybody for the invitation to have us here on Jose Gomez farm worker justice day um, I don't know if the family's still here but it's an honor to to be able to present on farm worker issues on on this special day for Jose Gomez who is an amazing person and looking at the photos and um, especially of the UFW flag and everything. It, it reminds me of the work that has been done by so many in trying to improve the lives of farm workers, not just in Washington State, but all over, all over the country. There are many of us, not many of us are recognized, but it's, it's wonderful that the Evergreen State College did do that, and so um, thank you for, for having me here, and we can't ever forget that the work that everybody does to improve the life of farm workers and improve our farms, farm or food system is important. Sorry. <laughs> este, quiero comenzar con darle las gracias okay. a la gente aquí en Evergreen por tenernos y también quiero reconocer eh, a la, la familia de José Gómez. A la familia de José Gómez. Yeah. Um, y José Gómez también. Um, and, and also just y, y todos los estudiantes y todos que están reconociendo el trabajo de todos los organizadores que han participado en cierta en muchas maneras en, en este uh, mejorar las vidas de campesinos y me, me, mejorar el sistema uh, alimenticio alimentario so um, it's really hard to translate and how many of you were at the farm worker tribunal a couple of weeks ago, it seems like. Es muy difícil traducir. ¿Y cuántos de ustedes estuvieron en el Farm Worker Tribunal? El Tribunal Campesino. So you saw, so you happened to see the in interpretation that we had to do from Mixteco to Spanish to English. Ustedes vieron la interpretación que tuvimos que hacer de Mixteco, Español, Inglés. So it's, I know it's not easy to translate um, and it's not easy to speak to allow trans interpretation time. Sí. So thank you for your patience, everybody. No es fácil traducir y no es fácil traducir en un contexto donde hay mucha gente, así que gracias por su paciencia. It's also a luxury to have an interpreter because most of the time um, we have to do our own and um, I have to interpret for Ramon and everybody, so. Tenemos gracias. Bastante, <laughs> tenemos bastante suerte de tener un intérprete bastantes veces tenemos que hacerlo nosotros, así que gracias. Um, so there's so much to talk about and I understand there's going to be a big question and answer period, is that correct? Um, hay bastante de lo que tenemos que hablar y como tengo entendido okay. hay, eh, va a haber una sección de preguntas y respuestas. So what I would like to focus on because Ramon is going to talk about uh, Familias Unidas and the boycott. And then I know that later on this afternoon, there's going to be a workshop on boycotts with Grace Cox, and I'm going to be participating with her in that. And so there will be a lot more detail on you know, why a boycott, uh, how, to f how to form a boycott committee, how to participate in a boycott, and why it's important. So we'll, that will be focused on in that workshop, at least my comments on all that. Um, luego vamos a tener una serie de talleres en los que se vamos a enfocar en eh, boycotts y porque eso es algo muy importante y Ramón también se va a enfocar en eso. So, because you're all students here, debido al hecho de que todos son estudiantes, or teachers, o profesores, um, and I would like to start out in listening to David Bacon, 
Um, first, I want to thank David Bacon for the work that he does documenting farm worker movements. Primero le quiero dar las gracias a David Bacon por el trabajo que hace documentando movimientos agrícolas. So, when I met him in Watsonville during the strawberry campaign, Cuando I had read his work um, in Labor Notes and other publications, The Nation and others, because my husband, who uh, is also one of my mentors and trainers, said, you have to read this guy whenever he writes anything. Um, cuando leí su trabajo por primera vez fue debido a mi esposo, quien también es uno de mis mentores y entrenadores, que me dijo, tienes que leer el trabajo de esta persona. So I had been reading his, um, and of his, reading his um, essays and writings for a long time and looked at his photos, and it was amazing to me to actually be meeting and speaking with David Bacon in Salinas, California, the same place that John Steinbeck came from, and I felt like I was in a in a dream or something to be so fortunate to be organizing farm workers with the United Farm Workers of America in the, in the place where John Steinbeck wrote and worked also for so long and then David Bacon, I felt like I was in a place that was just steeped in such valuable and important history for the work that we were doing there at, the, at that political moment. Um, así que fue bastante increíble para mí conocer a David Bacon en ese específico, específico lugar donde se ha dado tanto trabajo en movimientos agrícolas en el pasado. Eh, fue una experiencia para mí bastante increíble. So I was um, assigned to the Salinas office. Me asignaron la oficina de Salinas. In, this, in the very first building that Caesar and the United Farm Workers rented to have an actual office for the union. En el primer edificio que César y la Unión eh, rentó para tener una oficina para la Unión. Way back in the early 60s. Eh, fue hace bastante tiempo en el comienzo de los 60s. The bullet holes that were shot at the farm workers in that office were still on the in the walls um, in the building the bu the building was riddled with bullet holes los huecos eh, de balas que se habían sido disparadas a los miembros del sindicato todavía estaban ahí en las paredes las paredes estaban rodeadas de huecos de balas so for a farm worker from Skagit County eh, entonces siendo una trabajadora agrícola de Skagit County to be in, in that political moment was amazing. Estar en ese momento político fue increíble. In that building, en ese edificio, where I knew that Caesar had met with workers, and some of those same workers were still there. Donde yo supe que César se había unido con trabajadores. Y Especially algunos, Camilo fixing the cars. Y algunos sure. de esos trabajadores todavía estaban ahí, especialmente Camilo arreglando los carros. So I heard many, many stories about the movement. Escuché muchas, muchas historias acerca del movimiento. And now, meeting Familias Unidas por la Justicia, the families of Familias Unidas por la Justicia. Eh, y ahora conocer a Familias Unidas por la Justicia y, la fam y las familias que forman parte de este sindicato. It's, I'm sometimes angry. A veces me siento brava. Sad. Triste. Anxious, ansiosa, and feeling like there just isn't any more time. Y siento como si ya no tenemos suficiente tiempo. In 1989, Caesar gave a speech in Tacoma. En 1989, César dio un discurso en Tacoma. Right after he'd finished one of the longest fasts he ever did to protest the use of pesticides in, in the food industry, eh, justo in the fields. Justo después de que hizo una, la huelga de hambre más larga que hizo en términos de protesta. And in that speech, he laid out all of the problems um, in the production of food in the United States. En ese discurso, él habló sobre todos los problemas en el, el área de producción agrícola en los Estados Unidos. And I would like to ask all of you to go look for that speech if you haven't read it. How, have any of you read that speech? Eh, y les quisiera pedir a todos ustedes que vayan y busquen ese discurso si no lo han leído. ¿Alguno de ustedes lo ha leído? So if you haven't read it, go find it. O sea, you si, have to read it. Si no lo han leído, vayan y búsquenlo porque lo tienen que leer. And the reason is that y la razón jo, es que José Gómez, 
came to this place, to this university, and he brought the stories and the reality of what was happening to farm workers. Y la razón es que es porque José Gómez vino a esta universidad y trajo con él las historias de la realidad que viven los trabajadores agrícolas. And Caesar came and spoke to Washingtonians about what was happening in California with the corporate uh, food, with the food system going corporate. Y César vino a Washington y habló sobre lo que estaba ocurriendo en California una vez que el sistema de producción agrícola se estaba um, volviendo algo más corporativo. And the farm workers came to, in the 90s, to the Evergreen State College with the boycott of Chateau Saint Michel y to, los, again, bring the reality of what was happening to farm workers in Washington State. Y los trabajadores vinieron a la universidad en los 90 de nuevo para traer las realidades de esas historias en California al estado de Washington. And now we return with Familias Unidas por la Justicia. Y ahora volvemos con Familias Unidas por la Justicia. And David and I are getting old and gray and tired. Y David y yo nos estamos volviendo viejos y grises y cansados. And maybe not that tired because we still have the energy in knowing that not much has changed. Y quizás ni tan cansados porque sabemos la tenemos la energía de saber que no mucho ha cambiado. And in fact, not changed. I think things have changed for the worse. Y de hecho creo que la mayoría de las cosas han cambiado, pero solo han empeorado. So if you're going to think that you're going to hear something from me that's inspiring or hopeful, sí que si crees que vas a escuchar algo de mí que es inspirante o algo que les va a llenar de esperanza, it's a mixed message that ¿Eh? I bring. Es un mensaje mixto el que estoy trayendo. Because when I say that time is running out, porque cuando digo que nos estamos quedando sin tiempo, it's because we haven't listened es porque no hemos escuchado because we have chosen to organize in a way that doesn't really change the system porque hemos escogido organizar de una manera que no cambia el sistema de, ra de forma de raíz we in essence many of us as farm worker organizers have been banging our heads against a wall um, en esencia bastantes de nosotros de los organizadores de trabajadores agrícolas hemos estado eh, pegando nuestras cabezas contra la pared. And I, I hope somebody's keeping times because I don't want to go over my time. Okay. So, <coughs> so here's the thing. Esta es la cosa. What Caesar spoke about and Jose Gomez spoke, spoke about, the solutions are in front of us all the time. Lo que César habló y lo que José habló es que las soluciones están al frente de nosotros todo el tiempo. And basically those solutions are all of you. Y esas soluciones son todos ustedes. In your families. Y sus familias. In your friends. Y sus amigos. In your neighbors. Y sus vecinos. In your communities. Y sus comunidades. Because farm workers, what I've learned in my organizing is that farm workers are one component of a larger system, the food system. Porque lo que he aprendido eh, a través de mis años de organizar es que los trabajadores agrícolas son un componente de un sistema. El sistema agrícola. And for many years we've organized like we were our own separate component of that food system. Y por muchos años hemos organizado como si fuésemos nuestro propio componente de ese sistema, un, un componente separado. There was a brief period during Caesar's organizing when large groups of community came together to support farm workers. Y hubo un periodo breve en el que grandes componentes de la comunidad mayor vino a apoyar a los trabajadores agrícolas. And the reason that the United Farm Workers went from over 100,000 members under union contract to probably less than 5,000 today. Y la razón por qué la eh, unión o el sindicato de trabajadores agrícolas fue de más de 100,000 miembros a, a 5,000 miembros. And, and that's just a, a rough estimate. We, do, we really don't know how many farm workers are under union contract. All I know is in Washington State, there's less than 200 at the moment. Y eso es solamente un estimado. De verdad no se sabe cuánto. Solamente sabe que es más o menos esas cifras. So, when Caesar formed a union and actually negotiated real union contracts with real benefits and, and wages that were just, eh, cuando César formó sindicatos y estaba negociando eh, 
nuevos salarios con sueldos que sí eran justos. There was a huge pushback um, by the muy, corporate food system. Hubo mucha resistencia de parte del sistema corporativo um, de producción agrícola. And there were, I don't, David didn't mention, but there were actually organizers shot and killed point blank in California by growers. Y David no mencionó esto, pero verdaderamente hubo organizadores que fueron eh, matados, le cayeron a balas en California, fueron asesinados. It was a clear message to the farm worker community, but more to Caesar. Fue un mensaje muy claro a la comunidad para la comunidad agrícola, pero más allá de para ellos también para César. Of what happens when workers stand up the way that the farm workers did in California. Sobre lo que pasa cuando los trabajadores eh, defienden sus derechos de la misma manera que ellos lo hicieron en California. And then the mobilization began against farm workers and the union. Y luego la movilización empezó en contra de los trabajadores agrícolas y el sindicato. It was a violence that, violencia that was manifested in many ways. Manifestada en muchas maneras, de muchas formas. So that it would so that the organizing of farm workers and and the the leadership of the farm worker community would not go beyond the borders of California. Para que la organización y el liderazgo de Um, la comunidad agrícola no vaya y no se extienda más allá de las barreras de California. So it was a political, it was, there, was po there was a political violence. Era una violencia política. Economic violence. Económica. Legal violence. Legal. And the usual character, the smearing of characters and the, the attempt to uh, smear the leaders of the movement. Y el mismo, eh, eh, la misma historia de sabotajear a los líder, líderes del movimiento. That was the most important part. Esa era la parte más importante. That we as farm workers, que nosotros como trabajadores agrícolas, do not know how to lead ourselves. No sabemos cómo. That we do not know what's necessary to build a better food system. Eh, que nos, o sea, trataban de decir que no sabemos cómo dirigirnos a nosotros mismos, que no sabemos cómo obtener un sistema agrícola mejor. And if we do win, y si ganamos, it is won by unfair, illegal, and improper ways. Eh, solo ganamos a través de formas impropias e ilegales. So I think that the most important message when we look at how at the farm worker movement and the sacrifices of people like Cesar Chavez and Jose Gomez and the other folks that are organizing in the farm worker community today. Eh, creo que el mensaje más importante cuando mencionamos las vidas de Cesar Chavez y Jose Gomez como lo estamos haciendo hoy is that we have to really look at the farm worker leadership. Es que tenemos que ver al liderazgo de eh, los trabajadores agrícolas and understand y entender that they really that the way that farm workers lead is different than the way the corporations is leading the food system towards in a different direction than the corporate food system is moving, right? Entender que ellos están eh, dirigiendo el movimiento de trabajadores agrícolas de una manera radicalmente diferente a la que los líderes del sistema corporativo lo están dirigiendo. So what's happened in the food system lo que ha pasado en el sistema de producción is that it has become totally and completely controlled by corporations. Es que se ha convertido, and you all know this, right? Es que se ha convertido completa y totalmente eh, dirigida por corporaciones. Y esto es algo que todos ustedes and saben. And it's not really ¿cierto? about healthy food. No es acerca de comida saludable. It's not really about, um, you know, taking care of the land no es de or the production system itself. O el sistema productivo it's about sí. making profit. Es acerca de hacer y ganar dinero. So, I think that we need to really look at how we organize to improve the food system. Creo que tenemos que ver eh, cómo organizamos para mejorar el sistema productivo. And I don't think that we can organize to improve the lives of farm workers or improve the food system the way that we've been doing it. Y no creo que podemos eh, efectivamente organizar para mejorar las vidas de trabajadores o para mejorar el sistema en sí. And it's si not about working with better marketing, 
or working with the corporations to improve the lives of farm workers. That, if we go down that road, then we, we only reinforce what the corporate food system looks at farm workers as. We are tools. We are beasts of burden. We are a disposable labor force. We are, in essence, the new slave labor force for the agricultural industry that was founded on slavery in this country. No podemos seguir trabajando eh, y organizando de la manera que lo hemos hecho en el pasado. No podemos eh, seguir trabajando con las corporaciones para um, ayudar a ellos a mantener un mejor marketing. Um, eh, si seguimos de la manera que, en la que hemos hecho y si hacemos eso, solamente estamos reenforzando un punto de vista que ve a los trabajadores agrícolas como algo completamente eh, dispensable como algo que simplemente está siendo usado y que es la nueva forma de esclavitud laboral de estos tiempos. So as, as Felimón has said many times, como Felimón dijo, a farmer ha dicho provides veces, a good barn for his tractor, makes sure it has gas and it's maintained and oiled. Un trabajador agrícola better than what he provides for the farm workers working in the fields. Can you say that again? Un trabajador, un, un ranchero trata a los tractores y la maquinaria mejor que trata a la gente porque se, se asegura que el tractor tiene un barn que le echa gas, que lo mantiene y que lo compone mejor que la manera que trata a los trabajadores. And so I think that we really, when, when we talk about changing the, the lives of farm workers and improving the food system, I think we need to do a much more fundamental observance or a, a study of how the food system is working now. Entonces, cuando vemos el sistema de producción agrícola, creo que tenemos que investigar de una manera mucho más fund fundamental para ver la manera en que el, el, en el que el sistema productivo está haciendo eh, eh, en este momento. I think I'm going to stop and wait until I have more questions, and it's really difficult for me to speak when I have to stop and go. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I can't, keep, I can't keep track of what I'm trying to say. Creo que voy a parar y esperar hasta que tenga, ustedes tengan preguntas y es muy difícil para mí tener que estar parando y siguiendo. Eh, yeah. Pierdo eh, la noción de yeah. lo que estoy diciendo. Thanks. Bueno, pues... Uh, uh, otra vez, mi nombre es Ramón Torres. Uh, my name is Ramón Torres. Uh, soy el presidente de la nueva Unión Independiente de Trabajadores del Campo. I am the president of the new uh, un independent union of agricultural workers. Uh, basada en, uh, en el área de Burlington. Uh, based off the Burlington area. Uh, primeramente quería, uh, pues, estaba viendo a la hermana del señor José Gómez, que también la vi el año pasado. Quería, pues, dar las gracias por estar aquí y pues darnos fuerzas porque es algo que deberíamos de recordar mucho. ¿eh? Uh, first off, I want to give thanks to um, Jose Gomez, uh, Jose Gomez's uh, sister, and for her being here. I saw her last year. Thank you for being here and for giving us uh, strength. Bueno, pues. Uh, a otra, una disculpa porque llegamos poquito tarde. Uh, we're sorry for being a little late. Um, estamos, a, estamos ya, estábamos en Washington, D.C. We were in Washington, D.C. Llegamos apenas a, ayer en la madrugada. We just got here uh, yesterday morning. Uh, estamos tratando de parar la aplicación de los H2A. Uh, we're trying to stop the application of the H2As. Uh, de los braceros que quieren traer para destrozar la huelga of the workers that they want to, the temporary workers that they want to bring in to break our strike. Entonces, por eso llegamos un poquito tarde. And that's why we're a little late. Pero, uh, bueno, hablando sobre por qué queremos cambiar el sistema. So, since we're talking about why we want to change the system. Pensamos que el sistema está hecho para los migrantes, para que sigan siendo trabajadores del campo. Uh, we think the system is made for um, migrant peoples to continue being um, agricultural workers. Uh, una de las razones es porque estamos viendo niños a los 12 años trabajando en los fields. Um, one example of that is the fact that we're seeing children of age 12 working in the fields. Mm -hmm. Niños que pues son hijos de migrantes. Children that are um, the children of migrants. 
Pero son ciudadanos americanos. But they're US citizens. Entonces, ¿cómo es que este país está permitiendo esto? So how is it that this country is allowing this to happen? ¿Verdad? Si según protege a los niños y más a los ciudadanos. They say they protect children and citizens. Entonces, ¿qué es la diferencia? What's the difference? ¿verdad? Que somos migrantes. The fact that we're migrants. Ellos no tienen la culpa que nosotros vinimos a tratar de hacer una vida mejor para ellos. It's not their fault that we came here to give them a better life. Un niño de 12 años necesita estar piscando frutas y verduras para ustedes. A 12-year-old child should not be um, picking berries in the fields for you all to eat. Y menos con estas condiciones. And way de less in, the, in these working conditions. Con estas condiciones de viviendas. With these living conditions. Estas condiciones. These yo creo que este país cuida más a los animales que a los trabajadores. We think, I think that this country um, takes better care of animals than they do of workers. Y esto es muy triste. And this is very sad. Um, yo no entiendo cómo este país formó este sistema. I don't understand how this country built this system. Y trato de figurarlo a mi modo, ¿da? I'm trying to figure it out my own way. Si ustedes tuvieran 12 años de edad. If y'all were 12. Y van a trabajar a los files en sus vacaciones. The fields on your vacations. Y ganan 300 dólares por semana. And you win 300 dollars a week. ¿Qué van a preferir? 300 dólares por semana o seguir estudiando? What are you gonna rather have? 300 dollars a week or to continue okay. your studies? Cuando sabemos que un niño a los 12 años con 300 dólares. When we know that a 12 year old with 300 dollars. Puede comprarse videojuegos, ropa, video zapatos. Can buy video games, clothes, shoes. Entonces va a preferir todo esto. So of course ¿verdad? he's going to prefer all of this. Y things. es la manera que nos están obligando a ser trabajadores de campo. And this is the way ¿verdad? that they're making us become field workers. Al dejar a nuestros hijos trabajar. Letting our kids nuestros work. Nuestros hijos están prefiriendo el dinero. Our kids prefer the money. Es no simplemente que lo prefieran. It's not just that they prefer it. Sino porque sienten una necesidad de ayudar a sus familias. But the fact that they feel a need to help their families. Porque nomás estamos ganando el mismo, es 9.47 por hora. Because we're only um, earning $1.45 an hour. Esto para mí este sistema no es, es muy injusto para nosotros. This system is very unjust to us. Y, y es algo que queremos cambiar y la única forma de cambiarlo es bajo un contrato de unión. And it's something that we want to change and the only way to change is by having a union contract. Esto es más o menos sobre los niños. Vamos a hablar de la gente adulta. This is not only about the children but also about adults. Nosotros, pues yo tengo, dice mi compañero Filimón, tengo 33 años. I'm 33 years old. Mi compañero Filimón tiene 33. Oh. <laughs> my, um, my coworker Filimón is 33. Y él dice que se siente muy cansado. And he says that he's very tired. Y dice que apenas va a la mitad de su vida. He says that he's only halfway through his life and he's already Dice very que tired. la única forma de que haya un cambio para sus hijos es haciendo lo correcto. Uh, he says that the only way that there will be a change for his children is by doing the right thing. Como huelgas. Y like, peleando por justicia. Like striking and fighting for justice. Y peleando por nuestros derechos. And fighting for our rights. Porque es cierto, él dice que no va a estar toda la vida para ayudar a sus hijos. Because it's true, he says I'm not gonna, he's not gonna be there all his life to fight for his children. Y esta children. es una gran oportunidad. And this is a great opportunity. Tanto como a los trabajadores como a ustedes. Um, not only for the workers, but also for you all. Nosotros estamos trabajando en los fields. We are working in the fields. De 8 a 50 horas. De 8 a 50 horas. Um, from, from 8 to 50 hours a week. Perdón. Estamos trabajando de 8 a 50 horas y no es justo and it's not fair que no alcancemos para comprar nuestros propios productos que piscamos. The fact that, it's not fair the fact that we don't make enough money to buy the products that we pick. ¿Verdad? Entonces es una buena excusa. So yeah, that's like a really good excuse. No sé si sepan que los trabajadores del campo está comprobada científicamente. I don't know if y'all know that it's been scientifically proven that field workers. Si empiezas a la edad de los 15 años a trabajar. If you start working at age 15. No pasas de 50 años. You won't live further than 50 ¿Eh? years of life. ¿Por qué? Porque es muy duro. Because it's a really rough job. Es como la señora que estaba mostrando David Bacon en su, uh, ahorita, It's like the lady foto. that David Bacon was just showing in the slides. De sus rodillas. Um, uh -huh. The story about their knees, how they break and they can't work. Es muy duro trabajar de rodillas. It's really hard to work on your knees. ¿Quién ha piscado fresas? Who de here aquí? has picked strawberries? Muchos. ¿Por cuántas horas? For how many hours? O días. Or days. Años. Years. No. 
Es muy duro, ¿eh? It's very rough. ¿Sí o no? Sí. ¿Sí? <laughs> yo también pienso lo mismo. I think so too. Yo también, yo tengo 31 años. I'm 31 years old. Y me siento a veces muy cansado. And I feel very tired often. Uh, a veces mi hija pues quiere jugar, es una niña de nueve años. Sometimes my kid wants to play, she's only nine years old. Y ni puedo ni pararme. And I can't even get up to play with her. ¿Por qué? Porque tengo que piscar fresas. Because I have to pick strawberries. Blueberries y moras. Blueberries and other berries. Berries. Raspberries. Blackberries. Para piscar fresas, los que ya han piscado. Uh, to pick for strawberries. En la temporada que piscamos está lloviendo. Um, when we pick for strawberries, it's usually raining in that season. Tenemos que piscar de rodillas. We have to pick on our knees. Lloviendo. Um, in the rain. No nos daban lunch. They didn't give us lunch. No nos daban breaks. They didn't give us breaks. No nos dejaban ir a la casa hasta que no se acabaran los bloques. They didn't let us uh, go home till the end. No nos daban ni permiso de enfermarnos. They didn't even let us get sick. Porque tienes que ir a trabajar aunque estés enfermo. Because you have to go to work even if you're sick. Y si no, te corren de estas cabinas. And if you don't, you'll get kicked out. La mayoría de nuestra gente viene de California. Most of our people come from California. Imagínense si corren a una familia. ¿Qué um, va a hacer? Imagine if they kick out a family, what are they going to do? ¿Verdad? No tienen lo suficiente para regresarse para atrás. They don't have enough to go back. Entonces fue una de las razones que los trabajadores de campo se detuvieron a hacer huelgas y a hacer muchas cosas. Those are some of the reasons why um, uh, some workers or many workers stopped and striked because they wanted to see these things change. Yo me siento cansado, imagínense los niños a 12 años de edad. If I feel tired, imagine how tired uh, 12 year old children feel doing this work. Niños que deberían de tener una oportunidad. Children that should have an opportunity. Como ustedes. Like y'all. ¿verdad? Niños que merecen otro, otro futuro. Children that deserve a different future. Queremos darles la oportunidad we de que give, ellos tomen su propia decisión. We want to give them a chance for them to make their own decisions. Pero hasta los 16 años. But up to 16 years old. A los 16 años pensamos que ya tienen conciencia. At 16 years old we think they have the ability to make decisions. Y pueden decidir si quieren ser trabajadores de campo o seguir estudiando. And that's when they should choose whether or not they want to be field workers or they want to continue. Esto debería de ser una oportunidad también para nuestra gente. This should be an opportunity also for our people. Pues no es por nada, pero yo no veo ninguna gente que sea indígena aquí. Um I don't o, o algún estudiante que sea indígena. Um, I just want to point out the fact that I don't see um, any indigenous uh, students present here. Ahí está uno, mi amigo. <laughs> There's one over there, my friend. <laughs> Yo quisiera que hubiera más. I wish that there were more. ¿Verdad? Que right? también tuvieran la oportunidad de ser maestros, doctores. That they also had the opportunity to be teachers, doctors. Licenciados, abogados. Lawyers. ¿Y por qué no? Pues si Obama es presidente, ¿por qué no un, un indígena ser presidente? Why not? If Obama is president, why not an indigenous person being president? Sería algo que quisiéramos. That's something that we want. Uh, son algunas cosas muy duras que hemos uh, peleado por tres años ya. There's some really rough things that we've fought against for three years already. Aparte de pelear contra esta compañía de Sakuma y Driscoll. Other than fighting against this uh, company that Sakuma and Driscoll's berries. Tenemos que estar peleando contra tiendas. We have to fight against stores. Para que retiren estos productos. For them to take, um, for them to not sell these products. Es muy duro hacerle entender a estas tiendas que nos están explotando. It's really hard to um, make these, the people in these stores understand the fact that they are exploiting us. Cuando ya tenemos tres años de, de pelea. When we've already been fighting for three years. Y estas tiendas como los, el PCC de Seattle. Uh, and these stores like the PCC in Seattle. Tiene una póliza donde dice que más o menos, ah, casi toda la póliza habla sobre trabajadores de campo. Right, where they have this uh, policy that basically almost entirely talks about um, agricultural workers. Yo no sé si para ser trabajador del campo necesita hacer, haber niveles para que nos ayuden. I don't understand or I don't know if um, to be an agricultural worker you have to reach some sort of level for them to help us out. Hemos peleado con esta, pues, 
alegado con esta tienda por año y medio para que retiren estos productos. We've um, tried to negotiate and bought with this store for almost a year and a half already for them to remove these products. Y no lo han hecho. They haven't done it. ¿verdad? Entonces, ¿cómo están ayudando trabajadores? So how exactly are they helping agricultural workers? Nunca habíamos pedido nada. We've never asked for anything. Esta es la primera vez que this, estamos pidiendo. This is the first time we're asking for anything. Y estas tiendas siempre han dicho que ayudan trabajadores de campo. And these stores say that they help agricultural workers. Y no es cierto. And it's not true. Es muy triste. It's very sad. ¿Verdad que estas tiendas, todos sus productos, nosotros los piscamos? Um, all of the products sold in these stores, we pick them. Y les interesa más el dinero que nuestra gente. And they're much more interested in profit than they are in us. Ahí es de que si está, si son miembros de PCC, por favor no compren risco y háganles saber que todavía que queremos que retiren los productos. Yeah, so if anyone here is a member of PCC, um, please don't buy Driscoll's products and also let them know that um, y'all don't want them to sell those products in their ellos, stores. Uh, ellos han dicho que han ayudado a cambiar las condiciones de los trabajadores de campo. They say that they've helped change the working conditions of agricultural workers. Pues la Unión ha llevado a esta compañía como siete veces a la corte para cambiar de ver a las condiciones de, tra de trabajo. Uh, but our union has uh, taken them seven times already to court um, um, for, they, for them to change the working conditions of the workers. Y yo nunca he visto una persona de PCC en la corte. And I've never seen a single person from PCC um, supporting us in court. Entonces no entiendo qué condiciones están cambiando. So I don't really understand what uh, conditions. They, si de veras estuvieran cambiando estas condiciones. If they were actually changing the working conditions. Pues yo no te vería, yo no tuviera que llevar esta compañía a corte, ¿verdad? I wouldn't have to take this company to court, right? Bueno, esto es más o menos lo que tenemos um, hasta ahorita. Pues ya se me acabó mi tiempo. Voy a esperarme para las preguntas también. Muchas gracias. This is more or less what we have so far. I'll wait for the questions. Thank you all so much. solidarity work with them ever since. Um, we've done work to um, using our location of being in Olympia to um, have actions at the Department of Employment Security um, to stop the H-2A application from going through um, and do uh, what we can to fundraise and bring awareness of uh, the boycott to the greater Olympia community. Um, yeah, we're uh, what else do we do? <laughs> we have a lot of demonstrations and pickets. Uh, we have, we're part of the boycott campaign here in Olympia. We're boycotting Sukuma, we're boycotting Driscoll's. So you'll see us a lot of times we picket outside of Costco and today we're actually picketing outside of Baby Thriftway at 4 p.m. to boycott uh, Driscoll's berries. So if you can come, please come. Cool. Yeah, we're trying to put pressure on local businesses to support the boycott and stop buying Driscoll's. So it's not a question of if you can come, you need to find the time to go. Because yeah. that is what we need. Yeah, um, yeah last year we had a, a picket at Bayview after Farmer for Justice Day and they took Driscoll's off the shelves for about two weeks and then put them back. And over Valentine's Day weekend, they had like a big berry display. So it's crucial that we all go there today. Yeah. We have meetings every Sunday at 1 p.m. at Red and Roses. And we have an interest meeting coming up on campus on Thursday. Uh, not this Thursday, but next Thursday, the 25th, from 3 to 4. At the table, we have flyers if you need a reminder uh, or want the location of where that is. It's going to be in cab uh, 3001. On your chairs, there was also petitions. 
saying that um, you agree to um, a boycott Driscoll's and a Sakuma Brothers Berry products, and um, we will be turning these over to Familias Unidas so um, that they can turn them into who? Sakuma and to Driscoll. Sakuma and Driscoll, um, showing that they have yep. uh, support from consumers as well. Um, at our table, we have these little flyers that give more information that you can hand out and talk to your people about what you've learned and like spread the word uh, just through your friends and um, things like that. We have a Facebook group so that you can be more involved as well in like upcoming actions. Um, yeah. What else? Also, um, with the spring coming up, I know there's a lot of opportunities for internships. Uh, last year. I helped work with the boycott committee for credit through school, and if any of you are interested in doing that, you can come talk to us, and we'll be at the table over there. I'm gonna pass around a donation box. If you could just give a little bit, if you can, the proceeds will go to Familias Unidas por la Justicia. Also, if you are over the age of 21, frictions donations will be um, going to Familias Unidas this week, and the dance party is tomorrow at 9.30 p.m. at Obsidian. Yeah. So thank you. We're gold. Puedo, no sé si pueda decir algo muy cortito sobre por qué es importante que apoyen. I don't know if um, I can say something very short about why it's important for you to support. Uh, como les dije, yo nosotros los trabajadores de campo trabajamos de 50 a 60 horas por semana. As I said, we uh, farm workers work about 50 to 60 hours per week. Para que ustedes coman. So you all can eat. Uh, lo único que estamos pidiendo es que nos apoyen con una hora fuera de una tienda a educar gente. The only thing that we're asking is that you support for one hour outside of a, a supermarket. ¿Por qué educar? Why educate? Porque por cada dólar que ellos estén consumiendo de estos productos de Driscoll. Because for every dollar that uh, you consume of Driscoll's products. Están ayudando a que a mí, a mi familia y las demás familias de trabajadores de campo la sigan explotando. Por eso es tan importante esto. This is why this is so important. Necesitamos parar la explotación. We need to stop Estamos the pidiendo una hora, no más. Por toda la comida que les pescamos. Gracias. Thank you. opportunity to get into small groups and uh, we have a few questions that we've composed uh, that we'd like you to all maybe discuss amongst one another for about five minutes per question and at the end we're gonna come together and ask then our panel you can have the opportunity to ask your questions and have them answered. In terms of policy change what do you think is one major impact that we can um, kind of work towards to change the lives of farm workers. I think one of the big changes that has to happen is just right off the bat, um, getting rid of the piece rate wage process has got to, that has got to be stopped. So, you know, changing the rules, and we were already actually through a roundabout way because of what Familias Unidas did um, in filing a lawsuit against the Kuma Brothers Berry Farms um, to make it as hard as possible for growers to pay piece rate wage. And we should not accept a product that is being produced in a piece rate wage process. And now, because, because we didn't ever, well, I shouldn't say that, let me restate that because we didn't listen to farm workers and we allowed the corporate food industry to grow the piece rate wage process, it was actually, that has now become a legal process in the state of Washington and in many states. Other industries are paying workers by the piece rate wage process. So when you when you accept the bottom to the very worst, then pretty soon instead of farm workers going up to a higher level like other workers, other workers' levels were brought down. 
And so that piece rate wage process has got to be just ended everywhere. Workers should be paid like what the original labor movement started out doing, an hourly wage with benefits, rest breaks, at least one or two, two days a week of rest, right? Right now, there's industries that are working, workers seven days a week with weird shifts and hour and hour, hours after hours with no regular, you know, um, workday hours set. And that's what the labor movement was all about to begin with, was for people to work a decent uh, work period, get a decent wage, and then also be able to enjoy life, to have time off. That was the whole point of the weekends and holidays and a regular day to go home and spend time with your families. Well, that is kind of disappearing from many, many industries. And I believe that you know the, the agricultural industry starting out with the slave system in the United States, that there's that mentality that that's what you need. And if you allow one group of workers to, to work and live under the worst conditions, then pretty soon all standards come down. And that's what's happened now. So I think that whole wage, piece rate wage process has got to be stopped. It, people should refuse to work under those conditions and we should look at policy and what, what are the policies that need to be changed to end that. I know that one way that has ended is because of union contracts, right? If you negotiate a collective bargaining agreement, you negotiate an hourly wage and all the other benefits that go with it. But if you don't have a union, and that's been the whole point of really um, weakening unions so that workers aren't represented, therefore that piece rate wage process has grown. Well, I mean, I, another one is the all of the all of the I shouldn't say it's the lack of policy and legislation uh, that has anything to do with the use of chemicals and pesticide in the food industry. That is just horrible. It is like there's hardly anything out there that really protects workers or the environment or communities in the use of chemicals and pesticides. Bueno, una cosa que yo también quisiera decir a También estamos viendo uh, la mejor manera de cómo ponemos un bill para sacar nuestros hijos de los campos, ¿eh? ponerlos hasta los 16 años. Um, we're also trying to figure out how to pass a bill um, to, that doesn't allow our children to work in the fields until they turn 16. Pero todavía estamos discutiendo esto. Una de las, uno de los problemas sería... We're still discussing this because uh, some of the problems would be que si no subimos los sueldos en el estado para trabajadores de campo workers, y quitamos a nuestros hijos de los files fields, lo único que va a pasar es que vamos a hacernos más pobres entonces poor. estamos tratando de ver todavía cómo podemos hacer este cambio so pero eso es algo que ustedes como estudiantes but this is something pensar más que nosotros, eh? that y'all as students could also, um, you know, think about. Solo te quería hacer una, un, he estado trabajando con mi programa de su, de la clase aquí local knowledge en investigación en la comunidad entonces hemos estado trabajando cerca de la comunidad de Shelton y ahí vemos niños de middle school de 6 o 7 grados trabajando en la brocha en el salad en el otro en el oyster y me ha tocado ver uh, muchachos en la high school también y llegando a la clase tarde media hora una hora tarde enfermo porque realmente ellos trabajan de 12 de la noche hasta las 3 de la mañana, 4 de la mañana, 5 de la mañana, irse a bañar, cambiarse, irse a la escuela otra vez cansado. Y eso lo hemos visto con los niños también de middle school y, y le afecta mucho en la educación de ellos. Si ustedes están, uh, y lo que sé que ellos trabajan por, por cada pesca que hacen de, de la brocha de 80 yeah. centavos la, 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 cada, cada. cada rollo. Uh -huh. Entonces, eh, um, ¿cómo podíamos ayudar a los muchachos? 
de, de middle school, de high school, porque usted dice pasar un video para que ellos puedan trabajar de 16 años, pero si sí, sabemos de los muchachos de la high school que son de 15, 16, 17 años, cómo se pudieran ayudar a ellos para que pudieran ser exitosos en, la, en el año escolar. Bueno, uh, ok. Um, yeah. So basically that question was about um, making reference to um, communities in Shelton that work with uh, oyster farms and making reference to uh, middle schoolers and high schoolers, some of which are um, over 16. And the question is how can we help them be successful in their education as well? Uh, bueno, mi respuesta es casi la misma que dije ahorita. My answer is uh, more or less uh, the same one that I said just now. Este, deberíamos de pensar cómo podemos subir los sueldos para sus padres de ellos, para que ellos no tengan que trabajar a esa edad. Uh, we uh -huh. should think about what are ways that we can raise the wages for their parents so that they don't have to work. Porque ellos no están ahí nomás por necesidad, no están ahí nomás porque quieren, because sino para ayudar sus estudios porque sus papás no pueden pagarlos. Right, because uh -huh. they're there not because they want to, but because um, they need to help their families because their parents can't afford. Y not como to dije ahorita, no podemos quitarlos de trabajar hasta que no nos aseguremos que haya un sueldo justo. And we can't uh -huh. take them off of the work until we have um, a com like complete security in the fact that the wages can be higher. Y yo pienso que otra manera que podamos trabajar más juntos es que se pongan en contacto con la unión. Um, and I think that a way that we can figure out um, more just working conditions is to get them involved uh, with the union. Uh, porque una de las formas que, que vamos a ocupar más testimonios para empezar un bill uh, va a ser una, una, algo que vamos a ocupar. Um, because we are trying to um, gather more testimonies so that we have uh, support for passing bills. So, como para el año que entra del el tribunal campesino que vamos a tener en Olimpia, sería bueno desde ahorita comenzar a, a, a juntar un grupo que venga y dé esos testimonios de lo que está pasando en Shelton. Um, so, it would be important for um, the next gathering that's happening this year in Olimpia of farm workers to gather a group that can come up so that we can gather their testimonies. So I just wanted to expand a little bit on that whole policy question um, because you're all students. Um, just re requesting for you to start thinking about the food system as a whole and what kind of like statewide or even county level policies or ordinances or legislation could be written that begins to form like food policy councils so that the food system is governed at the local level. So that the, the eaters or people that care really can ensure that the food at, or it, where you live is being produced in a just manner that protects the environment, doesn't, isn't cruel or exploitative to animals and is fair and just for, for the human workers. And not, you know, even on a farm, not just the workers, but the farmers themselves, we know that there are many family farmers that are also in poverty because they can't compete against the big corporate guys. So for those of you that are looking for different, way, different things to study, find out the pathways to try to figure that out, whether it's legal. Um, you know, maybe I, I'm thinking sometimes we don't think about like, um, city planning or community planning, like planning commissions. How would you build a just food system? How do you legislate, at, let's just say at the county level, a food system that you know belongs to the community in that county? Because that's the way you keep the Walmarts out and you know all of these, the Safeways and all of these corporate leeches that come to take the resources away from the community and sell crappy food to the, the people there. So think about that as a student. You know, what do you have to study to, to build a whole new food system? You know, um, first, uh, the students who, I, I had a chance to talk to some of the students in the local knowledge class yesterday, and I think that um, it's important to get the stories of those young people who are working at night, talk to them, hear what they have to say, and also take their pictures so that we, you know, can document and, and you know, spread knowledge about what's happening to them. 
Um, but two things. One is, you know, I think Ramon is completely correct, and that is that the basic problem is low wages. You know, if you look at the bad housing that workers have, or look at, you know, what it is that's forcing young people to go to work instead of going to school or arriving at school tired in the morning because they have been working at night, um, at the bottom, the problem is money. The bottom is, the problem is, is that the growers and the employers are not willing to pay what people need in order to be able to have a decent life. And that brings us right away to the problem of power. Because it's good that we have good ideas and can propose good solutions, but we have to be realistic. <clears throat> Big corporations, like whether it's Walmart or Monsanto or any of them, Driscoll's for sure, they are not simply going to give more money to farm workers because it's the right thing to do. You know, they're not going to change the system because they are profiting from it the way it is. And if we want to change, we have to also deal with the other necessity that we have, and that is organizing. We have to be organized. And students have a role to play in that. You know, part of that is workers going out on strike in the fields in Burlington. You know, they kind of did their bit in a way. They stood up, they got organized, they formed that union, they took action to try to force the grower there. But our experience of farm worker struggle, going back to the great boycotts in the United Farm Workers, is that, that we need a combination. We need, that's half of it, but we need the other half of it, and that is we need to organize pressure on the growers and the employers from the other direction. Because even if we organize ourselves and we go out on strike, they're still getting berries into the supermarkets, right? We can go to Safeway and we see that there's all the Driscoll berries there. So there's something that we can do from the other end too, and that is we can cut into their sales. We can stop buying the berries. Caesar used to say that if you cut off 5% of the sales of a company, you win. You'll make them negotiate with you. And that's what we want. We want them to sit down with us and talk about the ideas that we have about how to make things better. But we have to force them to do it. They're not just gonna do it voluntarily. And so your role in this is to organize the pressure on the other end. You know, your role in this is to be able to get out in front of that supermarket and convince people not to go in and convince people not to buy those Driscoll berries until enough people are doing that so that Driscoll sales start to fall and that's when they sit down and they negotiate that contract. So there's something really important that you can do you can do it this afternoon and you can keep on doing it. And that's what that Farm Worker Justice Committee here at Evergreen um, is trying to do. So if enough of us do it, then we win. Uh, thank you guys for being here with us today. Um, I wanted to ask if any of you could speak to um, recent changes in immigration policy and um, their effects on the movement of people kind of in and out uh, back and forth from the US and down into Central and South America. Thank you. So there have been no changes and only bad ones, if, there, if you could call them that. Um, I think that the San Quintin workers and Familias Unidas por la Justicia is a perfect example of the impact of free trade agreements on immigration reform and the movement of workers and the organizing and the creation of movements of workers. Because Driscoll has holdings and businesses and workers on both sides of the border. Driscoll's can move product and capital freely across the border, but the workers cannot come together because because of the lack of immigration reform and because of the way that NAFTA was written and the agreements that were made. And so I think that it has a huge impact on, on movements, but yet, you know, when I, David speaking about power and workers organizing, that when workers organize and make their decision to stand up for themselves and the community supports them because we can't do it alone, that's why we're here. Why, why would Ramon and I come all the way over here and talk to you? Because we can't do it alone that change can happen. 
And that border can be, um, we, we can move across borders if we organize enough and if we have enough support. So even in spite of that, Familias Unidas por la Justicia and the workers in San Quintin have formed an alliance and are staying in communication and they are organizing and boycotting against Driscoll together. So there are ways to do it, but it's, it's harder, it's difficult, it's not impossible, and we, we can't do it without the support of communities and students like yourselves. Um, now, immigration reform, seriously, there's not gonna be any, no matter who gets elected. There is not going to be any reform that's going to really create any kind of equality for undocumented people in the United States. Whatever is created is going to be unfair and unequal. And the, the, the whole driver's license debate is a perfect example. Why in the heck do we allow two different levels of driver's licenses for people? I mean, that's just wrong. And it's gonna continue to be like that. So what that means is just more organizing and for us to be able to not accept laws that are not fair and are not just and are oppressing other people. And I think that, that that's a, um, a, a good way, I think, to explain this or to show this is Familias Unidas por la Justicia themselves. I mean, this is a group of undocumented workers that have organized, formed a union, are boycotting, are still here. And that's why I had um, the sign up there um, what, do, what does it say? Sin tierra, sin tierra, sin, sin, tierra, sin papeles, sin miedo. Landless, undocumented, and without fear. Because we are, farm workers have always been landless workers in this country. We have always had the majority of farm workers in this country have been undocumented. And it's only when we are unafraid of who we are that we can, ma that we manage to organize. So, you know, immigration reform, I think that's something that we are just not gonna focus on. We're gonna focus on organizing ourselves to move forward the way we know we need to move forward and establish the, the precedence against for social justice that we need for ourselves. And hopefully we're here so that we can bring you with us because we need the support to be able to do that. You know, capping on what Rosalinda just said, um, you know, the people who are working in the fields in Burlington or in California or in San Quentin are people who were mostly farmers in Oaxaca, yep, living right. in small towns. So what, it, what, what happened that all of a sudden 350,000 people left Oaxaca and came to the United States to work? And what happened was that survival became impossible you know, for people who were growing corn, we negotiated a trade agreement that let Cargill or Archer Daniels Midland dump corn on the Mexican market in order to take, take it over. You know, talk about a corporate food system. You know, what that did was it drove farmers out of the for food system so that corporations could dominate it. You know, and Driscoll is another, and Driscoll's another example because Driscoll took that agreement, NAFTA, that's why they're in Mexico. Before NAFTA, they couldn't be in Mexico. Now they can. They can own land, they can produce, they can hire workers, they can do all of these things. And the cost of that is that people are displaced. They, they go on the road looking for work. And people come here and then we have our immigration system and our immigration laws that then criminalize people. You know, you become undocumented, which means that for an undocumented person, it is a crime to work. You know, it's against the law. The Immigration Reform and Control Act says it's illegal. And we have an even worse one. Now we're fighting another part of the immigration law which says that a grower can then take advantage of this flow of people and go to Mexico and recruit people who need work and say, come to the United States, all you have to do is you have to go to work at Sukuma Farms and cross the picket line, right? Yep. Guest workers. Yep. So this is corporate immigration policy and corporate immigration reform, and that's what's been on the table. And in a way, when, when Rosalinda says that we're not gonna get any immigration reform, I have to say I'm glad. Because although we need legalization, the price that comes with it is more the guest workers, more the criminalization, more militarization of the border, all no, of these things. There's no dignity in it. 
I'm so sorry? It's, it, there's no dignity in what they want to do with immigration <coughs> reform. This is the perfect scenario for creating the 21st century slave system, slave workers. So you're undocumented in the United States, you're criminalized because of that, creating a vulnerable workforce that can be exploited in order to, for that workforce to survive in the United States. Then you have homeland security and an immigration system that contracts out detention centers to private corporations. So you are an undocumented worker paying into social security and the tax system of the United States that's being used to pay the geo corporation to basically, you're paying for your own imprisonment at the detention center in Tacoma, Washington. Then you end up in the detention center and you get deported and you sneak back to try to survive and it's this endless circle, cycle of exploitation that is the perfect scenario for corporations in the United States to be rich here and there. And we're it. We are the new slave labor force of the agricultural industry especially. So why would you want to change that? Why would these corporations want to, to change the current laws? Yep. muchos obstáculos que que tenemos que enfrentar día con día y más de migración. There are many obstacles that we have to confront every day, especially in regards to immigration. Pero estamos haciendo todo lo posible por tratar de pasarlos. And we're doing everything possible um, oh. to be able to surpass these. Es como el sindicato nuevo que se formó en San Quintín. It's like the new union that was formed in San Quintín. Este año llegamos a un acuerdo entre las Familias Unidas y la Alianza en San Quintín. Uh, this year, uh, we reached an agreement um, between Familias Unidas and the Alliance in San Quintín. De las dos partes, somos trabajadores de campo explotados, casi las mismas explotaciones allá y aquí. We are, um, on both ends, we're exploited uh, farm workers, um, and it's pretty much the same stories over there and over here. ¿Por qué les digo las mismas? ¿Por qué la misma compañía que nos está explotando, Drisco, es la misma que está explotando los trabajadores de aquel lado y de este lado? And uh, why am I saying that these are the same um, forms of exploitation? I'm saying this because it's the same company. It is Driscoll's both on their end in San Quintín as much as in our end here in Washington. Entonces ahora lo que hicimos San Quintín y Familias Unidas fue llegar a un acuerdo, a un trato. So what we did now was uh, reach an agreement, um, um, yeah, an agreement. De boicotear Driscoll hasta que ganemos contratos de unión juntos. Um, Ellos de aquel lado y nosotros acá to boycott their schools until we reach um, a contract, a union contract, them on their end and us on ours. Pero ninguna de las dos uniones va a agarrar un contrato sin que la otra también lo agarre. Um, but none of the two unions are gonna sign a contract without the other union also getting it. Entonces fue un trato de solidaridad que hicimos con nuestros compañeros so para a, tratar de llegar a, a, a tener mejores condiciones. It was um, a solidarity agreement with our um, beneficiaries. Yeah, with uh, our, with them and us <laughs> as the same people, um, in order for both of us to succeed. Que para nosotros, chance para ustedes no sea algo, pero para nosotros es algo grandísimo. This might yeah. not be such a great deal for y'all, but for us, it's a uh -huh. really, really big deal. El otro trato fue de que yo en marzo 15 salgo para California por 30 días. Um, the second agreement was that um, on March 15th, I'm leaving to California for 30 days. Uh, mi trabajo va a ser juntar de 20 a 40 comités nuevos. Um, and my job is going to be to uh, help put together 20 to 30 new committees. Pa seguir boicoteando Drisco. To continue to boycott, boycott Lo que Driscoll. viene siendo la costa de, lo, de California. Um, in what is now like the coast of California. Después de que yo llegue para acá, vamos a sentarnos a tener otra conversación. Uh, when I get back here, we're going to sit and we're going to have a new conversation. A ver si empezamos un boicote en Japón. So that we can start a boycott in Japan. Eso va a ser algo grandísimo para nosotros si pensamos que lo vamos a hacer. It's a really big uh, deal for us and we really do think it's something that we're going to do. So that's how you address immigration reform and unfair trade agreements. You just organize.
Hola, muchas gracias por estar aquí. Um, mi pregunta es un poquito, um, en esta universidad todos tenemos mucho privilegio um, y hay muchas personas aquí que sienten que um, haciendo sus propias granjas o están, pueden así como crear cambio en el sistema de la comida. Hay mucha gente que está muy interesada en la comida orgánica, en muchas alternativas de de cómo crecer nuestros vegetales y frutas y todo. Y muchas personas también tienen el privilegio de poder ir a otros países a, a jugar de que son granjeras, básicamente. Um, y estoy, me pregunto cómo podemos hacer para... Um, ¿Cómo se dice? Raise awareness. Concientizar. Concientizarnos más que solo una vez al año cuando tenemos este tipo de eventos. Um, y qué podemos hacer para personas que no tienen ningún um, contacto con personas que trabajan um, ¿Los campos? en los campos y las personas que nos, nos that bring our food here. Oh. Oh. So the question uh, uh, overall was um, about Evergreen and how here um, there's a lot of privilege and there's um, a lot of people wanting to make change through doing things like getting involved in like organic farming and like local farming in that way and also um, there's a lot of privilege and like a lot of folks even have the opportunity to go abroad and play like their farm workers there and um, come back and basically also we, bas we have this one day in which we have contact with farm workers and um, gain awareness about this, but what are ways that we can um, basically work on spreading awareness and learning more about this uh, throughout the year? Yeah. Well, uh, si entendí bien la pregunta, a uh, una de las cosas como granjeros, los que quieran hacer granjas, a uh, lo primero que necesitan hacer, si quieren que su granja funcione y salga para adelante, es hablar con sus trabajadores. ¿Qué es lo que realmente quieren y cómo piensan que sería el sistema mejor para ellos para que la granja se vaya para arriba y los trabajadores también? Um, so the first thing um, in regards to folks that want to uh, start farms and work in farms, um, the main and most important thing is to have communication with uh, the workers that work in the farm in a way that both um, the farm flourishes and so do the workers. Si hacen estas granjas sin trabajadores de campo, lo único que van a hacer es abrir más la explotación. Um, if you start these farms without um, farm workers, the only thing you're going to do is continue uh, perpetuating a cycle of exploitation. ¿Por qué van a seguir el mismo sistema que las granjas tienen ahorita? Why would you follow the same system that um, farms have now? Uh -huh. Van a seguir, por ejemplo. Sí. Y ese, lo que no queremos es que sigan este, este mismo sistema, entonces la mejor manera es que los trabajadores del campo formen su propio sistema en estas granjas nuevas. Um, what we don't want is for y'all and people to uh, continue perpetuating this system and we think that the best way to change the system is to enable farm workers and support farm workers in creating their own system. So how, how many of you belong to the, um, the Farm Worker Boycott Committee Collective, whatever it's called? How many of you belong to that? Lift your hand up high, because I'm assuming you're proud of that. If you to that. I, don't, I don't believe that you can believe in sustainability, a better world, a better food system, and a better future for you and your children if you're not political. Mm. There's just, if you're not, if you're not present in the political moment that you're living in and are fully aware, aware of what you're doing within that political moment, then nothing is ever gonna change and it's, and I think it, then, then it's all about you, which is fine if that's what you wanna do, but let's just say that's what it is. Um, because we're making it easy for you. We're saying one hour a week is what Ramon is saying. One hour a week 
for you to spend in front of a grocery store educating people on why they should not buy Driscoll's is also a way for you to educate yourself on what you're doing with your life. Everybody should eat healthy. If that means you have to grow it yourself, that's great. It's all needed, it's all good. But if you are not participating in your community in being political to make this a better world, you're not making this a better world. You're just taking a, a moment in time to do something good for yourself. And if that's what you, you want to do, then, then do it, right? But let's not fool ourselves. It's not going to change the system. It's not going to help farm workers. Um, there's many things you can do. It's as simple as just not buying the products. It's going to the grocery store and asking, where did it come from? Why don't you have more fair trade? Why isn't there more um, local, you know, local family farms? Why, are you, why do you have Driscoll's? I mean, there's so many small things that many, many people can do that can help us. And then just coming here and listening is, is also helpful. So there, there's many ways, but it can't be just one way. And it's not enough that you're growing your own food and eating healthy yourself. Congratulations, but I'm, it's not enough. Not to change. Um, otro sistema que nosotros queremos intentar es el de las cooperativas. Um, another system that we want to try is a system of cooperatives. Uh, pensamos este año a poner una cooperativa de tortillas orgánicas. Um, we were uh, thinking of this year starting a cooperative of organic tortillas. Um, esto uh, es uh, para darles más caminos a los trabajadores de campo para que no se vayan a trabajar para corporaciones más grandes. Um, this would be a good way for um, farm workers to uh, work in rather than work in bigger corporations, bigger yeah. corporate farms. Sa sabemos que muchas gente, mucha gente no tiene confianza en contratos de unión. Uh, we know that a lot of people don't trust union contracts. Trabajadores de campo, ¿verdad? Como tra estoy hablando de trabajadores de campo. I'm talking about farm workers. Uh, Entonces, a estos trabajadores no podemos obligarlos a que estén trabajando por contratos de unión si no quieren. And we can't make these farm workers uh, work uh, through union contracts if it's not what they want. Pero sí podemos ponerles otro camino. But we can give them another path that they can follow. Para que formen cooperativas. Uh, for them to form cooperatives. Y no trabajar para corporaciones. And not work for corporations. Pensamos poner una tortillería de tortilla orgánica este año. Uh, we're thinking of starting a tortilla shop this si year. Funciona, and if it works, pues pensamos poner una cooperativa de maíz. If it works, we are uh, trying to start a corn cooperative. Y especialmente va a ser para puros trabajadores de campo. Um, and this is going to be specific to uh, farm workers. Y, y este es el sistema. Esto nos daría chance de cambiar poquito más el sistema que hay ahorita. And this would give us a chance to change the current system just a little more. That's all. That's all. Hi there. Um, I just wanted to ask, so when Driscoll decides to um, recognize you guys and change their policies, do you think other big corporations across the country and across the world, like Dole and General Mills, will change their policies as well? No. <laughs> <laughs> and Driscoll's may change it temporarily, but they're not going to sustain it if there isn't um, a viable, well-organized, and militant workforce. No corporation has ever willingly created change without a militant workforce, unless it, it's making them more profit in the marketplace. And I think that that's where we're headed to in this new world with this whole development of social justice labels or sustainability labels or you know um, all these other different types of labels like Whole Foods has and PCC that make people think that everything's fine and dandy with the way the product is being, is being produced, and it's not. And so I think that this is why actually talking to workers and listening to what they're saying and seeing the reality is what's needed now. Things are, remember I said earlier, things are worse than what they, did be, they were before. And so we used to know that if there was a union label on a product, then we knew things were fair, right? Well, now there's not as many union labels because even if you have a union contract, Chateau Saint Michel has a union contract, the largest wine producer in the state. But do you see a union label on the bottle? 
No. Because they're not really bought into the sustainability, the social justice label. They were forced into that contract and they have to stay and keep the contract because there's a militant workforce fighting for their union contract all the time. And this is why community to community is trying to work to do a dynamic shift so workers don't have to do that, right? So we don't know what's gonna happen because we're into, this is a whole new way of organizing that Familias Unidas has undertaken. And our hope is that it will be a change, but it's not enough if there isn't some policy happening at the local level, if there aren't enough people like you fully committed to maintaining that change, whatever it, it may be, right? Because it's Driscoll's, it's Akuma's, and all these other farmers. So that's why I think it's really important that the change that we make and the organizing that you do is not within the existing system. Like Ramon said, you can't, you can't work to sustain the system that's already bad. It's gotta be a new way of farming. It's gotta be collectives, cooperatives, you know, in, anything but corporate, right? And so right now, if you make an agreement with a corporation that they're gonna pay workers just like one cent more, and there's no union contract with that or any kind of legal contract, but it's good for the corporation to be promoting social justice because they're giving farm workers a few pennies more, what happens when that corporation decides, eh, I don't wanna do that anymore. Everybody's convinced that I'm a good guy because I put this label on there for two, three, maybe five years. I don't wanna do that anymore. How are you going to ensure that the workers in the fields are actually going to be benefiting from the use of that label in the, in the food chain? And this is what we're talking about. What I'm, I'm really serious when I say the food system, the way it's structured right now is controlled by the corporations. And any deal that we make with a corporation that does not include a militant workforce and a dynamic shift in the production and in the, in the shipping and in the selling of a product is not sustainable change. It's not a shift in the system. It does not bring justice to farm workers. It is very, very temporary. And this is why Caesar died. This is why Jose, what Jose Gomez fought for all my life. It's what I've been fighting for all my life. It's a shift in the system. It's not working right now. And so what I'm saying is that we've got to do things differently, much more militant, much quicker, and we cannot compromise and negotiate with a corporation thinking that, well, they're, they're gonna keep their agreements with us. They're good guys now because they raised the wages a penny or two pennies or even five cents or whatever. That's not true. That's not, they really, I, I'm coming to believe, and I think Caesar believed this, they don't care. They really don't. It really is just about the profit. So what are we going to do to shift that so that it's not just about the profit? We have to change that. And that's the challenge I think we all have together. And I'm lucky, I think that you're all as young as you have because it's going to take even more time. But yet the farm workers on the ground right now don't have that kind of time anymore because of the environmental damage that's been done to the land, the water that we're losing, and because the, the, the consumers out there are much more convinced in believing some of these labels and believing how much easier it is to buy the food in the, in the grocery store chains that the, the way that it's being sold now. So there, there's a lot to think about there, but I think that that's, those are some of the things that we, I, I want to bring to you as, as young people of, about how you organize and how you look at, at us as farm workers. You know, I didn't graduate from high school, but I'm not stupid. All of the farm workers in Familias Unidas did not go to school. They don't speak English. Some of them don't even read and write, but you know what? We are not stupid. They see clearly. They don't care about us. This is not about a corporation care. We, know, we see what's being done to us, and the only way to change that is to stand up and say we're not going to take it anymore. Whether it's legal, illegal, whether it's immigration reform, no immigration reform, a union forms, a union forms, that's it. It's a group of organized workers. But as farm workers, again, I said, we can't do it alone. And you have to stand with us. And you have to believe us when we say, like Caesar said, we're being killed with these pesticides. It's growing. And it's out of control and you have to help us stop it now in the Central Valley, California in the early 80s. Nobody listened. 
We're telling you now, we are the new slaves, slave system in agriculture. We're asking for help and what Ramon says and Felimon says, what the San Quintin workers say is true. You shouldn't need David's photographs. We are saying the truth, it is what it is. We need your help and your support. One hour a week is what we're asking for right now. We're gonna come back and ask for more. You know, we want a dollar in, a, in an hour. Time is the most important thing you can give us right now. To think, time to strategize. How are you gonna pull those damn Driscoll berries out of the grocery stores? Figure it out. We can't come here and figure it out for you. You know your community. Join the committee, figure it out. That's what we need. It's very, very clear. I think that we have time for maybe one, one more question. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the relationship of the farm worker struggle to the broader labor movement and what support and solidarity your, your, your have in that relationship and what's missing, what else needs to happen? Sorry, Lynn, can you repeat the question again? Oh, I forgot. No. Um, what's the relationship between the, the struggle of farm worker justice and the broader labor movement? What's, what's there, what's missing? Bueno, ahorita, okay, ahorita tenemos a, bueno, ahorita el Concilio Laboral nos reconoció como unión independiente. Um, right now we're uh, recognized as a, as an independent union. Uh, Son miembros importantes. Bueno, nosotros somos, nos, uh, ya somos miembros oficiales de, de todas las uniones, entonces ya tenemos votaciones. Um, so we are yeah. of, uh, they're, they're official voting members of the Washington State Labor Council. I can, I can translate. Mm -hmm. yeah. Entonces ya podemos ayudar a cambiar más condiciones, ¿eh? So now we can help with the labor movement ya to vamos a improve tener working condition. Más para arriba en lo so político, we have a ¿eh? bigger political voice at a higher level now. Entonces ahora vamos a tener la posibilidad de cambiar más cosas, no nomás para nuestra gente del campo. So now we have possibilities of creating more, a broader change, not Tam just for farm workers. También sabemos que hay gente blanca que, hace, que está siendo that, explotada. But we white people that yeah. are being exploited. Pero en veces no se unen las fuerzas también por los colores. But many times there is no solidarity between people because of race. Pero ahora que somos miembros, but now that we're members, nos ha dado otra oportunidad de pelear no nomás por trabajadores de campo. We have been given the opportunity to fight not just for farm workers, sino but for other workers. Sino por toda gente humana que haga en este estado o en el país. But for all human people in this state and in the country. Porque todos somos iguales. Because we're all the same. ¿Qué tienen ustedes que no tenga yo? What do you have that I don't have? ¿Qué tengo yo que no tengan what ustedes? What do I have that you don't have? Lo único que tienen ustedes es una oportunidad mejor que yo. The only thing that you have is one better opportunity than I do. Yo cuando viví en Guadalajara viví hasta mis 18 años. Yo también tenía sueños. Yo también quería ser. Estaba platicando con mi amigo acá. ¿Tu nombre? Se movió. I was talking to my friend over here. Martín. Uh, y me, me dijo que si podía explicar esto otra vez. Esto lo dije el año pasado. And this is what I said last year. He wanted me to repeat it. Yo no tuve la oportunidad de estudiar como ustedes. I did not have the opportunity to study Pero sí tenía you, sueños. But I had dreams. Yo también quería hacer algo. Pues, I wanted to do something doctor, different. abogado en mi país. Doctor, lawyer, something in my country. No pude. I couldn't. Mi papá falleció y my tuve father, que venir a este país. My father passed ¿Ah? away and I had to come to this country. No me quedó otra opción. I had no other option. Entonces esto es lo que me da mi fuerza para seguir con todo esto. This is what gives me esto. strength to continue doing this work. Todo lo que es. That's what, <laughs> that's what I want to say right now. Uh, so I think that the, the relationship between the labor movement and Familias Unidas por la Justicia has probably been, um, it, it's very strong in solidarity right now. I've been a labor organizer since, gosh, I don't know, the early 90s. Um, I've never seen such a quick and strong response from organized labor to support a group of farm workers like um, they have supported Familias Unidas por la Justicia. So they have really good relationships with many unions in, individually, with individual unions like the steel workers, the United Food and Commercial Workers, um, the ILWU especially, the um, IBW, 
So there's a, it, there's a lot of support coming from labor, both financial and otherwise. The fact that they're a voting member of the Washington State Labor Council is historic. There has never been a farm worker vote in the Washington State Labor Council until Ramon Torres you know, has been accepted as a delegate to the Washington State Labor Council. I think Tomás Villanueva was the president of an independent farm worker union in Washington State that began the boycott at Chateau St. Michel Columbia Crest. And that, that union, which was based in Granger, Granger, Washington, was a very, very poor union. Very, very poor union. And I will never let the Washington State labor movement forget that they let that union be so poor and so weak. Tomás Villanueva struggled. I'm sure he came here and spoke to students many times. He died in poverty. He struggled, and I will be damned if I'm going to let the labor movement let a farm worker union fade away like that. That cannot happen, and you can't let it happen either. We are equal to all other workers. We are, you know, members of the society, and this group of workers has formed a union, and that's another place where you can help. Because this union has to be seen just like other unions, and that is what Driscoll's is using, trying to use against it, the fam Familias Unidas that they're not a real union, that they have no legitimacy, that they have not been, quote unquote, certified by God knows who they expected certification to come from. But that's another way that you can help. You, and whenever asked or you hear it, this is a union, a farm worker union, just like all other unions, because they exist, because they have over 500 members, because they have signed union cards, because they're fighting for a union contract, because they're in solidarity, and because they're united, and because they come to talk to you about the struggle. So you can help with that. You can, you can help legitimize the union by recognizing them as, as um, activists, as eaters, and as members of that, by joining the committee. The fact that you join the committee that's helping with the boycott legitimizes Familias Unidas por la Justicia because that is a support group that's in solidarity with the bona fide, legitimate farm worker union of Washington State. So in joining that group, going to the picket lines or the boycott, in helping to raise money to sustain the union, you are saying that they are legitimate and real and deserve that, that, that respect, that they have the integrity for you to give, like I said, one hour a week or a dollar if you gave a dollar a week to the, donated a dollar a week to the farm worker union, you're gonna help sustain that movement so that we can change the system, at least in Washington State. Eso de las donaciones, quería ser muy claro. Somos la única unión independiente de trabajadores de campo. I want to be very clear about the donations. Um, we are the only independent union of uh, farm workers. Pues estamos luchando contra la explotación. We're fighting against exploitation. Entonces, yo tuve que tener, hacer una decisión muy fuerte en nuestra unión. I had to make a very uh, difficult decision in our uh, union. Tuve muchos comentarios de otras uniones que por qué yo no cobro membresía a mis miembros. Um, I had many uh, comments given to me by other unions uh, asking why I don't uh, purchase membership or charge dues. charge dues to the members of my union. Una de estas razones es porque estamos a contra de la explotación. Um, one of the reasons for this is because we are against exploitation. Estas compañías ya no están explotando, entonces yo no puedo llegar y todavía cobrarles una membresía cuando ni siquiera hemos logrado más beneficios. Um, if this company is already exploiting us, uh, why would I charge uh, dues for them when we're already being exploited by them? Entonces, uh, lo que queremos es acabar con la explotación dentro y fuera de la unión. We want to end with exploitation both inside and outside of the union. Entonces, por eso pedimos donaciones. And that's why we ask for donations. Porque no se me hace justo yo pedirle una donación a los trabajadores de campo cuando sé que están siendo todavía explotados. Because it's not fair to me to ask um, for donations from farm workers when I know that they are being exploited already. Entonces, es por eso que pedimos a ustedes. That's why we uh, ask y'all. No pedimos donaciones mil, dos mil dólares, un dólar, cincuenta centavos, lo que pueden. We don't ask for a thousand, two thousand dollars. We ask for like a dollar, fifty cents, whatever y'all can give. Todo eso nos va a poder ayudar para nuestro movimiento. All of that is going to help our movement. 
Gracias. Thank you. So this concludes our portion of this portion of Farm Worker Justice Day. Uh, if we could have one more round of applause for our panelists. Este, por último, les quería pedir una disculpa. Yo no voy a poder asistir a la línea piquete que vamos a tener hoy. Yo pienso que se merecen una, resp un, respuesta. Yeah. una respuesta. ¿Por qué no voy a estar? Yo estoy peleando por familias. I am, uh, for uh, y también por mi familia. And also for my uh, family. Uh, en estos días van a operar a mi esposa. My wife is going to uh, get surgery in these coming days. Uh, ya tengo cinco días fuera de mi casa. Now I've already been outside my house for five Entonces, days. Entonces, uh, quisiera ir y estar un rato con ellos. Uh. Uh, so I want to go and spend some time with them. Gracias. Thank you. Um, so we actually are going to have a lunch break now, and at 2.30 to 3.30, we have two workshops going on in the college. We have a sign-making workshop uh, for signs to bring to the protest at 4. That's going to be an E3105. Um, and then we have the history of boycotts led by Grace Cox and Ramon and Rosalinda. That's going to be an E3107. And then at 4 p.m. at Bayview Thriftway, We're going to have our picket line. So if you can come, we'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much. So just to follow up on, on what Ramon said, I'm going to keep haranguing you guys. This is why we need your time, because the, um, it's hard for farm workers to get to urban areas to participate in the picket lines. And it's hard for us to keep up the kind of pace. As the boycott grows and gets better, then our presence is needed more and more especially Ramon's and the farm workers. He has been basically assigned by the membership of Familias Unidas to be the lead organizer and the spokesperson. So he, like he's been in Washington DC the last three days. That's why we need you and your time to represent the boycott, to convince consumers because we can't be everywhere. It's just too much, but it's gotta be done. Otherwise we're not gonna get to that, to that shift, right? With the, with the union contract. So, For those of you that are going today, thank you very much for being there, for talking to the consumers and keeping your eye and being vigilant with this one particular grocery store. But I know that there are others. Um, we would like to have committees go to Costco, Whole Foods, especially Costco and Whole Foods. We're really pressuring them. So just think about joining the, the committee or forming your own and um, continuing to increase the number of picket lines in this area. Thank you very much for listening to us. Boycott Risco! Boycott Risco! Boycott Risco! Boycott Risco! Boycott Risco!